Yo, I made bacon pastelillos yesterday. I should probably That's wait. Good. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Bacon and cheese sound like that might be. Thing. That's gonna be the food. But I ain't never want to make food as a business, but that might be the thing. That might be. <laughs> like, yeah. That might be the thing. I got some discs too. You're making me. I almost <laughs> forgot about. I almost forgot we had them joints. That might be the yeah, thing. I might, I might have to do that tomorrow. You ready? You ready? Uh, Ty made some the other day. She makes stuff. Does she, she want a battle? Does she want a battle? I don't know. You, you gotta ask her. <laughs> I don't know what her catalog looks like. Like, like. This is the first time in a long uh, time. Like you ready Pata to start? Even like, you ready to start? Ain't seen Patelios for a while. We started. We started. We started. Right. right. I don't I mean, something, can... son. I don't something. There we go. Don't I don't something. I don't, what should we name this thing? One I don't something. Came up was, I don't, oh, that's the name. I don't something. <laughs> I don't something. Or that, was that bar you said. Yeah, no, you said I don't know something. Yeah, I don't was, something. Um, Plague Chronicles was a name. That was a name. Mm. Yeah, my screen's fucked up, but I'll take it. It's whatever. The camera's still fucking up, but it's whatever. Mm. Yeah, we um, gotta think of a name. We, we gotta think of. But a yeah, name. tell Tab, she wanna get bopped in Bastilios in the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, you know, I let it know. I let it know. I, I made, I made the bacon pastelillos yesterday. Um, mm. So like, what it had, it had. Yeah, I, I'm gonna be green screening it up. I don't know why, but oh well. It's because I was talking smack oh, on green screen. I see it now. You I see actually, it too? See, I see what you're saying. It's flashing like green. Yeah, I probably should have restarted, but I mean, we hit record, so it's. It's not uh, doing it. It's only doing it every. Like, every so so, second, yeah, yeah. Now is fine. But um, yeah. but yeah, man, I I did the pepperoni roll. So we got the cut up pepperoni, right? And then you put the cheese in it. I'm using that Italian six cheese, right? And then you kind of like roll that shit up. And then so I do two of those. So it's like this now. It's like the power, you know. Mm. So now I got two sushi rolls. And then I was cutting up the bacon. Once the bacon was fried, then I was putting it like in little baby. Baby bacon, mm. like putting it on there. Now I'm sprinkling more cheese. Now it's rolling them up. It. I said, you, <laughs> you should do like a high quality montage of you making the. There's a bunch of shitty Twitch streams of cooking. I never thought of all the things I would do, like maybe cooking, but maybe that'll be me. And I'll just pasta Leo cook. Only it's just pasta <laughs> That's it's, it. It's, it's, <laughs> the show turns around like what you can put inside a pasta Leo. That's it. So I did that for most of them. But then on the 9th and 10th, I wanted to experiment. So, you know, the rolling thing for the rolling pin for the pastelillos, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I put the bacon just straight up on that shit, and then I embedded the bacon. Mm, ooh, so it's kind of like, like, like... That's like the, the, the cheese pizzas, whatever, you know, when they got the cheese in there for the stuffed crust. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of like stuff, stuffed... Stuffed bacon, yeah, yeah. Yes, stuffed dough, pastelillo, I don't know. So, That's yeah, man. Good. That that's been coming, I think yeah you get easy like I said man you could do the breakfast pasta Leo dude that, the bacon's working you can do the the egg man egg bacon I sausage. was down for breakfast down for breakfast <laughs> burritos I definitely ate a lot of breakfast burritos um when I was in the military mm. that was actually like a real cool thing they just had like a little station but I used to just get some mix of chorizo bacon eggs cheese I think they they had another meat it was bacon chorizo. And something else I can't think of. Mm. Um, and then beans and all the, you know, all these other stuff. But yeah, no, I do like a good breakfast burrito. I haven't tried really the breakfast taco thing, which is big yeah, here. I haven't gotten into that. I heard a lot of other people. I eat it though. Breakfast pot. No, they cool. That yeah. they, they, a breakfast pot to Leo though sounds. Ew. Sounds a it's little the game changer. It it's the game changer. It's the yeah. game changer. Bring, bring, bring the Puerto Rico here <laughs> to the yeah, SA man, streets. To the SA streets. It would be in 2020 that I find Papa Leo, though. Of all mm. the years, it would be this year. Mm. California looks crazy. I'm glad I left. Because of the fires? Yeah. There was a streamer. Out. I don't know what's going on. I haven't seen nothing, but there's this girl. She, she, she only streams on the weekend because she's like a normal person. But she usually does these like uh, what are they? I don't know why I'm doing this with my arms, but <laughs> like to describe what's called the outside, <laughs> like just path walk, like you know, goes to parks and just like walks and talks. So it's like real talks, but you're outside. 
but it was just like in her house today and i was like what was going on and, and yeah i guess there was she said the air was so bad that she was just she you know just doing it from home because she couldn't do the outside like nature walk that they do you know yeah it looked it looked crazy people were telling me that when the um because there's pictures where like the sky is red mm. can't even see anything they were like the air quality was actually better but i guess Friday, the skies were clear, but like the air quality was terrible. I was there last year for, I think, somewhere in Sonoma County and some of the wine country out there. There were a few bars, and it was like it was in the air. We could smell it. It was it was bugged out. Um, even in the house, like it was so bad that like you could smell it in the house. Like you had to keep your windows closed, and you know filter it if you had one but yeah that's crazy i'm, I'm definitely so, glad i'm not dealing with none of this. me and my sister we got into it i think a few weeks ago and she thought i was crazy and maybe i am but like i feel right maybe you know maybe you could approach a more logical approach to this I me mean, i feel if we really wanted to there's no reason why we couldn't solve the this fire issue that seems to happen every year right am i wrong am i wrong on that yeah, I don't know the details of like. I don't know I, either. I, I didn't do no research. The issue is. But this, me, this one was started just by thunder, though. So some sometimes. Okay. Like, so this was natural. This was natural. Yeah, it was just. It's just you know people were. Saying I don't even that mean too. natural because I guess all of them are natural, right? But I mean this was like some weather nah, shit. Last yeah. year, last <laughs> year was the PG and E. One of what is what is that? Resist. What is that? There was a town, I don't know if you remember last, I think it was last year, two years ago, the town, the whole town burnt down, Paradise, California, but it was a part of, you know, a string of wildfires <coughs> and stuff. But PG&E is the Con Edison of California, so they're the power utility company. Mm. And some of their equipment, they got sued. Um, some of their equipment, electrical equipment, had something, right, like sparked or something happened, and that's what actually caused... The, the wildfire so they were held liable for you know i don't know if the equipment was maintained or you know whatever the case may have been but the, i know last year at least some of them were caused by some like mechanical you know equipment started a fire basically yeah um and california the, the brush is real dry um so it's you know it just happens people are saying global warming is making it you know more dry so it's it's easier for them to start but i read some things about people like they offered to put fire breaks and things but people didn't want it near their properties mm. um so what's a know, fire break that, besides that it probably breaks uh, fires you know so if you if you ever go somewhere the only place i never knew what a fire break was until i was in the military but if you ever go to uh, like a military base in california um that has hills there's they look like big roads it almost looked like somebody carved out a big ass road in the middle of a mountain like a big trail but not like one like one cars could go through yeah. and i think that's to keep it so if like a fire it won't spread it's a break because there's no grass. It's unflammable material yeah it's just like dirt right yeah, so yeah. it'll you know prevent like, you know, ideally prevent the spread of a fire. You know, wind can obviously make things travel and, you know, a sparklands or a tinderland somewhere else. But the idea is that it just won't sweep across a grassy area. It will stop at the break because there's nothing there to burn. That's my understanding of it um, from it. So I guess they offered to put these things in certain places. But people didn't want it, you know, on, on, on their property or whatever the case may have been. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know that much about uh, like fires like that. Yeah, we I'm started not... a few when I was in the military. I seen we started <laughs> a few shooting because we're shooting explosives. If the stuff oh, is wow. too dry, um, something could catch. And like, yeah, yeah, there's been a few times. Um, I got a picture where we we had to stop because we started a little brush fire. Mm. Um, but a few got out of control where they had to send us home. Um. But yeah, yeah, dry that dry brush in California. Um, yeah, I, I sometimes feel, that shit just happened. Yeah, yeah, but I, I, I don't know. I just feel like with technology growing as much as it is, and like just with our problem solving the way it is now, like like if that was really a prioritized problem, 
I feel like that's something we would like be able to take care of. E- even if all it was like, all right, we can just put them out very efficiently, you know? Right, right, and considering right. it happens every year, it just feels like, yo, like what is going on? How are we growing so much in some of these sectors? And you telling me we're losing the fire? Like that shit is older than everything we use right now, you know what I mean? Like, like, right, right. and I say the same thing always about like Houston and New Orleans. Like, yo, why do those places still flood? Like, you know it's happening every year now at this place. And, like, there's a city in Europe. I feel like there's always a city in Europe, right? And they were having similar issues. And they did some shit that, I, you know, I don't know the damn science. But they did some shit considering, like, the water was just being elevated so much. Or it's almost, like, integrated to the city. And now it can't flood no more. You know, it's like, mm. you got to change that infrastructure uh, enough in those two cities so that it can incorporate that water somehow, you know? And, I don't know. I feel like there's probably something there with the fires that if that really was a priority, if you know it's happening every year, I feel like there's a way to stop it. Cause, yeah. And I don't yeah. follow that world. So there might be yeah. things people are working on. Like, I, I don't know. But yeah, just even like, you know, I don't know, maybe something that you give the, the, the plants or something that, you know, I don't know, they hold more moisture or, you know, I don't, I don't know. Um, but I've seen things that people could do, so and that costs money. So you know, obviously, then you know that's the stereotype answer, right? It probably costs money, and people rather use their resources well, yeah, yeah, elsewhere. Yeah. You know, like, like. I, I saw a video of a dude who lived like, like I'm pretty sure his house was actually in the fires, but it was like untouched. Mm. Um, and he had, um. He had just done a bunch of like knew that that was the case where he lived. Um, obviously had the means to do so, but he like basically like made his house like not fireproof, but it was set up like there were breaks. He had like a, a sprinkler system or something that kept like like the vegetation surrounding his house moist so it wouldn't catch on fire. The the wall in and, and things that he had were like fire retardant. Um, so his house was, you know, as set up as it could be. You know, for if a fire happened, don't mean that his shit couldn't get burnt down. Do you, but... do you think we could do a California s- sprinkler system, like like a massive California. Death Star style? <laughs> like, 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 some shit that shoot from mad water from space or something like that. No, nah, I mean, see, nah, I said I Death Star because I just I meant huge doing. infrastructure, I but I mean like literally that. part of the ground somehow, like like something that it doesn't kill the 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 forestation there, but like that it just kind of sinks with it, merges with it, you know. That sounds like a tough engineering feat, given. But the I feel like that's of possible. Where these things could occur. I feel um, like so that's possible. Like you don't want to overcompensate for certain things either. Like they have been occurring more often, but it's like, yo, do we just put sprinkler systems throughout all of California? Like I don't know. Well, I don't know all of California, but all of the areas that maybe need it. You know? Maybe like, not. Like, yeah, maybe yeah, like spots. Yeah, yeah maybe like, spots that are identified. I don't need all of it. Like, we don't know, need a wall. <laughs> these are like really common areas where these things kind of spark. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's the case. Um, but yeah, no, I don't. I don't know enough about. Like, I really don't know all of the details of of, of this shit. Um, but I definitely have experienced them in California, both in Southern. And Northern California. No escape. The North, Northern California, I don't know. They, it, they happen is it me. worse there? I feel like I would think that Southern California is worse because it's just, it's drier. Mm. But my time in NorCal, yeah, the, the three and a half years I was there, two of the years, well, well nah, because I left. But yeah, there were fires last year. Yosemite, I think. Yeah, no, it was crazy. There were like a few, a few of them happened. But I remember that in Southern California too. Yeah, at least two of the four years I was there, there was like, you know, wildfires and shit. Mm. And we, like I said, we started some like on base. There were there were fires, brush fires that started. Um, but yeah, yeah, it was nuts though. It was nuts, people. I'm, I'm glad I'm not. In that on just top of everything else going on. Like, yeah, yeah. This, this, that, smoke outside, like, nah, man. Well, speaking of fire, Conway dropped the album, right? <laughs> I didn't. I didn't listen to all of it. Um, Me, I, I haven't either. I, I kind of been bumping still "Fear of God" yo, because that song's hard, man. 
Joe, um, <clears throat> they covered it a little bit, and they were like, you know, kind of had a little a different sound, a more uh, maybe some things outside of hardcore Griselda sound that you kind of used to. I didn't hear enough of it oh, to right. like hear that, but this, the few tracks I heard, I like them. I thought the beats were cool. I like, I like Conway. I forgot I can't do nothing on this computer while I'm recording, so. Yeah, I'm going to have to experiment with recording on this computer. But uh, I I don't know. Uh, when I open it up, I'll be able to tell more. But Fear of God is definitely my favorite. It's a hit boy thing. But honestly, it felt like if you want to say pure Griselda vibes from the beats, maybe not. But I feel like it's still Griselda-esque. For sure. Those, yeah, those no, beats. no, it still has the the same feel. Yeah. That was something that they said. I was just saying. Like, I mean, I like Lemon with Method Man, that's definitely Grizel. The, the, even if it's Alchemist enough. and other people doing it, you know? I didn't hear it enough to, to kind of maybe get what they were saying, but that was something that they said, that there was a little bit of growth, I guess, on this one. Um, but no, I, I, I like Spurs I like, 3? Come on, man. Of course I heard that. I skipped to that real quick. The, the mm. trio, you know, all of them on there. Benny, Westside. That's definitely a Griselda track. Like, Benny even names the track in there. The, Fre the Freddie Gibbs track is cool because I don't know if Alchemist made that beat, but, but I was like, man, if he make that beat, that's kind of, it's just funny just seeing the Alchemist twins on there. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, no, I, I like Griselda. Um, so, yeah, I like generally a lot of the stuff they come out i like that dark beat style that you know the regular the, the established griselda sound or whatever i like mm. i don't know that I was like by beat thing, butcher so. though the freddie gibbs song Not no this, that was the thing that they said was that there was a lot of different um producers um that was the thing there's a lot of different producers. So maybe it's not so much that the sound is different, but uh, you know, slightly different because the new producers are different people. But, I know, yeah, I know they no, say growth, and like I'm it. not even trying to say this, Hayden, because it sound they they be sounding good, right? But you know, that that it do be funny, man. Like the thing that, that gets you there, right? They they get known. Um, I ain't saying even all they beats was Darringer, but they just have that sound, right? And now they get there and now they have a more normalist sound and it's like well is that growth is that what we used to say in a day right selling out uh is that trying new things because it's almost by them like getting like normalist beats that in some way is kind of like takes away what made them even special right because it was the fact that they were using literally that they sound sounded from another era because if they on normal beats well don't they just sound like everybody else then not really but you know what i mean right like it, it, yeah, but you might. That's just one way to look at it from the outside looking in. But you're now in a space where maybe you have access to different people that you couldn't work with before. Maybe yeah. right, like Berger or Bush is not. When we coming up, that's who we got and that's who we sticking with. But now that we we in the industry and I can get, you know, so and so or Hit Boy or all of these other people are now want to work with me and they may have a different kind of sound. Um, you know, I don't know. I guess you could ask those people to cater to you and like try to make a Griselda type sound, but then what would be the point of that other than having none of the producer's name on it? If that's the case, then I could just stick with right whoever was whoever I was messing with in the beginning. If you really want, if I wanted my sound, so it might just be part of like, yo, it's cool to work with these other people, it might be business, right? Like. I'm with this person. This person's with them. It could be some um, ATL type things that you, you you talk about. People get fit. Not not quite the same thing, but right. Like, yeah, let's get on some stuff together. So I don't know that it's selling out or all of the things that you know that that could come up. Who knows? I have, yeah, I yeah. Have no idea. Could be business moves. Could be experimenting. Just work, doing something new with someone else that you haven't worked with before, and and yeah, it could be a bunch of different stuff. Yeah, I mean, plus in the they just make a lot of shit in general anyway. You know, what is this like Conway release number two or three? You know, <laughs> like of the year yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, that isn't yeah. a single because honestly, they pop up on my release radar every every week. <laughs> like Conway, yeah, yeah, yeah. As and a feature, to be searched for for like being not just being stuck to one thing like that's cool i like certain people for what they do 
But from their perspective, if they were like, yo, I could do more than just this, people think I'm just good at this little angle or, or on these beats or, or with this type of flow. Like if you really care about your skill level, you might want to prove or see if you could do it in another kind of way. Oh, the or trappy beats. Type of style or yeah. this type of beat or this type of cadence and stuff like that. So there's, you know, there's a lot of good reasons that people could switch it up or may want to switch it up. So I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, literally, my, was cool. one of my it favorite cool songs it is like the Hit Boy beat. So I mean, you know, mm. it ain't like I don't like the normal. So I just find it interesting. It's just interesting to see that, you know, <laughs> like, like so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I like I like the first few tracks that I heard from it. Um, I have that. I liked a few songs off of it. There's still a few uh, songs on the Nas in rotation. I still like I still like King's Disease in 27. Summers. I almost want to hear that album again because um people hmm. the way they talk about it, they make they make it seem like it's like a top top album, you know? And I'm like, all right, man, I need to hear it again, you know? <laughs> like Yeah, I don't know what I didn't read or see whatever you saw. We in the new age, I have a whole lot of yeah context with Nas, like a whole lot of frame of reference with Nas to be like, well, I don't know, I guess it is I like a lot of stuff on it. Um I don't know. Nas has got a lot of stuff. That's I don't know. They're saying it's one. People, people people talking about it like it's one of his, his best albums. I'm like, all right, man. I need to hear this again. You know, I thought it was cool, but people was like, I I, I could kind of see that from from the way people talk about albums. Mm. Um, I don't know. I, I'm not gonna argue that. I guess. Um, I don't know, but I like definitely like some stuff off of it. I like a few tracks off of the Big Sean. I've been listening to. But not like it's like three um the deep reverence, lucky me, and full circle are like mm. uh I don't know the songs I I, I Yeah, deep reverence is to. hard for sure. Um who else? What the Boldy James thing that came out. What was it called? Um, I can't remember what it was called. The Alchemist thing? It's not Price of Tea, right? Something else? No, nah, that was what came out before. I can't remember what it was called. Um, but 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 that one I was I, I like I like the production on it. I like Boldy James, so there's definitely some joints off of that. New stuff that I've been listening to. Like, off that list we were talking about, I started hearing that Kenny Beats Denzel Curry album, Unlocked. That's a pretty mm. good album. That's pretty, I don't know who Denzel Curry is. I guess I, I mean I, I guess I could say I do now and that I've heard of him. Oh, I don't. I don't really. Know who he is. I I mean obviously I'm thinking Denzel Washington, but he, I guess yeah. If you're gonna say that, right? He's <laughs> Den Curry is a, a Golden State Warrior. The the famous one is. That's why you're thinking of that. Um, okay, okay, that's why. Steph Curry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, nah, Denzel Curry. Um, I don't know what he sound like not on this Kenny Beats album, but yeah, he do some interesting things with his vocals and and that he uses the pitches a lot. So like you know he'll rap it or whatever, but then similar to how like not similar, but I'm trying to keep it simple because I know you, you don't know all the production stuff. But they'll pitch his voice out of low or high, you know. So obviously if it's low, maybe he'll have like a not like slow part of screw, but you know just a deep part. Or mm. they'll pitch his voice high, and those will be like his main vocal, just him chipmunk rapping or, or chip or him deep rapping, you know. Um, mm. And then there was like a song uh, where it's like, "Yo, the spirit of DMX is in this guy right now," <laughs> like, like, mm. like, and his flow was right, just right. going like he was doing that, like that you better go like that. Like he was doing that, like that thing that DMX does, you know. Like, mm. like, and I was like, "What's going on right now?" <laughs> like, Mm. Okay, but it was dope. I like that. Album. I think oh, I don't know. it's only like nineteen minutes or eighteen minutes. So yeah. Okay. It's, it's good Some one. other singles came out. I seen something from MOP. Really? Billy Dance, I think, came out with a with a DJ Premier produced track. Oh, um, you know what I heard from Pre? No, there were two things. It was an MOP, maybe a feature on somebody else, but someone MOP, and then Billy Dance also had a track. I think with Premier. Um. Yeah, there were like some little random joints that kind of came out. Um, I think the last mm. track, and it's funny, I called it twice. So I think the last track on Conway 
is uh I didn't get that. It's made by yeah. yeah, I just picked and choose. I picked some random shit. I don't even know how I got there. But I was hearing nothing less the last track. Cause yeah, I haven't heard the album in order, but I was like, man, I should sound like it's made by DJ Premier. I wonder who made it. <laughs> and then it was DJ Premier. I was like, I right, yeah. still got yeah, it. Can hear it. And then I was hearing yeah. um mm-hmm. Armani Caesar, the the girl on Griselda mm-hmm. with Benny Butcher. And I was like, Yo, this sound like DJ Premier, and I looked it up. It was DJ Premier. I was like, mm. I, right, it's still, I could tell, right, right. I could tell. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that the, the Billy <laughs> Dance track. Um, I like, I like the way it sounds. That's I, what I it's just, called. It's called Billy. Nah, nah, I don't know what the name of it's called. It's Billy Dance and, and uh, DJ Premier, though. No, nah, no, nah, I mean, but he's using that name. He's not using. Yeah, it. because it's just him on it. It's not. It's I don't the, even um, know what that means. It's just him. I'm like, I've never Is he been... Womax not there? Are you to... No, I know what that means, but I don't, is what I'm trying to say. Like, I just, I'm not oh, used yeah, to that. Oh, yeah, we're not used to them. Yeah, no, I got you. I see what you're saying now. Yeah, we're not used to them. Now, in recent times, like, there, there's been a few yeah. MO... things here. Sometimes they've been on them together, and I've seen just, um, like, like Fizzy um did the thing with, uh, I think it was, damn, was it Coogee Rap or, or Sean Price? One of the dudes from MLP did drop the project with, with you know, posthumously with uh with Sean Price, but it was just one of them. It wasn't. I might have that messed up though, but I I, I could swear it was um Fizzy from 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 um MLP, and he did something with Sean. So in recent times, I've seen a few things where they haven't been together as MLP. But yeah, he's just on that with Preem. We're in that era, um, man. Everybody, everybody do their own thing. You know, trying to think what else that that's it really for new stuff. I, I don't think I really listen to too much new stuff. I have listened to a few more Mozzie tracks. I don't know if you you probably not too familiar with I don't him. know it's what that a, is. Yeah. It's a Bay Area rapper. Um, it just you know, it's Bay Area, it got that bounce, it got that sound to it, but you know, street gang kind of stuff. But yeah, no, I kind of like his style a little bit. I like uh, it's not new or anything either, but yeah, there's a few things off. off his last album I saw and I listened to it. Probably because I was up there and a little bit more like, you know, hearing some of that stuff um when I lived up there. But yeah, I like some of his some of his tracks. So I've been playing a few of his. NBA Youngboy came out with the album. I don't listen to him, so All right. I, didn't, I didn't I didn't check it out, but I saw that was on on a little drop list. Um I was looking yeah. at that stuff to see what I was hearing that was new. And I know the most surprising thing, there was some new, it's not his song, but it was some songs. It had like a poppy type sound, but Benny did a feature on it. I thought that was kind of was a dope song. It's just funny hearing them on like that type of beat though. <laughs> like, 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 yeah, they but, be all over the place. Yeah. Um, I heard this song. Uh, Drift Gods is what Richie Branson, who I always tell you about, and Slick. I don't know who Slick is, but it's it's just interesting uh, hearing it because he talking about him looking up to Richie and now making a track with him, you know. So I thought that was mm. kind of a cool track. Um, Benny has an album coming out. Um, oh, they all do. All the time. They Maul, all do. <laughs> Maul alluded to it because they talked about the Conway one. Mm. I don't remember. Joe asked some question. I don't remember what it was. Thirty eight special mm. and Benny the Butcher, the Stas box. Yeah, 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 yeah. That that recently came out. That's like a new song. Yeah. Oh, you know who That's that is? I... You know who those those are? Thirty eight special. Or Thirty eight special. Yeah, he. I I think he's of like New York, Rochester. I think he's from New York. Um, you could Google him, but I think he's from like upstate New York. Um. So that track I don't know is that pretty dope. Sure. But uh yeah, yeah, yeah. 38 special is pretty cool. He he's good, he's collab with them um a few like if you look at, at the Griselda's catalog or go to their Spotify, you'll see him sprinkled throughout a lot of they a lot of they stuff. Um, I I was I was hearing El Mind talk about it's like my new discovery. I haven't dived on him yet because it was a big wave day for me yesterday. But I was hearing uh El Mind talk about his timeline of like you know, trust in the process, and then once the, you know, right, like one, once things, once one thing happens, right, the first million, right, like Button said, then everything came, and right. so he was telling the timeline of like the first thing happening, and then everything else came. 
Um, and then he gets to this dude, um, Bryson Tiller. And mm -hmm. I was hearing some of this, and I was like, whoa, what is this? You know, so, like, I definitely, I saved a few songs, but I, I might go deep sea diving on some Bryson Tiller in a bit. Oh, you like that dude? Uh, some of these songs, yeah, it seemed kind of cool. Mm. Seemed kind of I think he, he might be more on the singing. Been out for a little, yeah, he ain't he new. Ain't nothing new yeah. But he new to yeah. me. You know, <laughs> like, 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 I thought he made like R and B type stuff. I think he might be more on like similar to that right. black guy. Like uh that sounds mad stupid. Uh, his name is Black. Yeah, that's <laughs> like, you know the guy who spells it six, you know? Who? Yes, so all right, so the way you spell black instead of a B. He sells. He says he spells his name. But what type of music is it though? So like, like opera, black has Drake? the vibes of like uh, singing. No, Drake. not the rapping. Well, you know what? But I feel like they all kind of thing. But I feel like I would put both him. I haven't heard enough Tiller, but the NBA vibe I get boy? is more no, singing. That? Wait, does but does NBA sing? I but feel like NBA, he raps. Tell me if that's y'all definition. None of these <laughs> Ask me, none of these motherfuckers are singing. If you're not Chris Browning or doing like, if you're not in that realm, you just auto tune in. Got what you, it got you. Like to me. Got you. Like, so I don't consider these people singing, but what's the line of singing and Drake? Like, Drake don't do the singing thing yeah. in my book. Drake is rapping and he got that kind of RB ish content, but yeah, yeah, NBA, yeah. NBA Youngboy, if because there are a few tracks of uh, NBA Young Boys that I actually do like. Um, I could, I could try got, playing he's shit He's got the now. trap, singy, rap, melodic kind of thing. So I don't consider it one of singing. one of Tiller's album titles is called Trap Trap Soul. So I gotta I gotta put him. Put more. on the NBA <laughs> Young Boys song. Put on like anyone. And Does anyone you'll hear? Um, uh, What's the song I like? There's a song. Uh, let me look for the song. It's like I don't want to go outside today. Yeah, I like I like that song. I don't know I'm what that like, is. <clears throat> some of these some of these new people that I I try to be a little open minded with some of the the shenanigans. It's called Outside Today. I like that song. I like Outside Today. You see what I'm saying? Like hold on, hold on. Hold on. Like, I can't see, like, is that singing? Is it... He's still like, right. You know yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like melodic rap. So is it that? Is that what you're saying? Like, that's what I think about when... You, when. Yeah, I would put this guy in the rapping sense. But, like, if you listen to Black... So play Bryson Tiller then. Let me or Tiller. Let me hear... Already the tempo slower. But he's singing... This is Bryson Tiller? Yeah. This is R&B, dog. <laughs> this is R&B. So that's nah, Tiller. Let me play you black. Yeah. I think that's how you say that's it. That's not That's not on the rap line for me. I know what you're saying, but he... No, I didn't. Like... I ain't call him a rapper. I ain't call him a rapper. Oh, I thought you said he was nah, a rapper. No, I was saying he's a singer. No, I said NBA. From, oh. what you, from that song, he, oh, I'm going to put him oh, in the okay, rap okay, class. Okay, okay. I'm going to put okay. NBA no, in the rap class. No, but I said he sound like he make R&B. That's what I knew him for. You were like, nah, he kind of... No, no, that's no. A, that's what we, I mean. we got oh, lost. So I nah. heard you wrong, though. Nah, Tiller, yeah, Tiller. So, but do you see what I'm saying about yeah, the yeah, 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 singing, whatever that is, like between yeah. Drake and NBA? Like Drake's not doing because Russ do the same thing. Yeah. Russ do the same thing. Right, right, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah Bryson Tiller. Yeah, no, nah, Joe Button. Like they. This is the other guy I was talking to you about, like Black, and he'll be singing on some of these beats. I'm gonna fast forward. But it's just on darker beats, you know? See, this reminds me of NBA Youngboys type shit. But with a let's get to the chorus. Style. See, I wouldn't compare this dude to Bryson Tiller. Like, they don't, that didn't sound the same at all. I don't know his discography enough, but I feel like every time I hear him, if it's a song that I like. Bryson Tiller song, it sounds like some Chris Brown type all right, like, let me... singing type shit. Let me go back to Taylor. Hold on. Exchange. Yeah, he's singing. Yeah, no, nah, that's that's 
The other dude, well, I ain't gonna say Black was singing, and not in that Trump track you just said played. Let me try to get a song where, where Black solo, all, all his top songs have a feature on it. That just sounded like a trap auto tune thing. Let me see. Okay, okay. All yeah. right. Here's Float. Just off the jump, I can tell. Like, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah he, 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 see? Right, he going into. But I think he might play around with rap. He got on the too. auto tune. He in the middle, though. He like trying to ride the middle of the ground. <laughs> Bryson Tiller, really, he on the arm. He, he knows how to bro. sing. He knows I got you. Yeah. That's what you say. So you like that? That's what I was kind of surprised you said that because I'm like, I'm if they have, sure they be having, R&B. they be having, if they have the hot beats, I could roll with them, you know. Mm. Mm. You slow jamming now? Hey man, I, I don't know. Like Oman, I heard some of these beats he made for him, and I was like, whoa, what's that? You about to start listening to R and B? What's that? What's that? If it sound like that, that sound like some evil R and B. That shit, shit. Sound like... <laughs> ain't that's, sound like that before. Shit. Ain't sound like that when we growing up. You know, <laughs> I can't even imagine you bumping no R and B. Yo, that's... Keith Sweat ain't sound like that when we was growing up. Nah, that's, 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 I'm not talking about. I ain't talking about none of the old school. I'm talking about today. I was gonna like, say Aaliyah, but she kind of had like Timberland and, and all those people genuine like with Timberland they ain't they ain't sound you like have this. Them albums you have I them do albums. have so those albums. Right. You, yeah. did, you, did you did listen to R and B that's that's true. Yeah. Uh, you did genuine a lot of R and B joints that came but see I don't remember you like you would have got like a one twelve album I felt like but I don't know if you was part got, of like, the bad boy collective album. too though. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you wasn't none of us was into R and B but that is true. You did you did get some R and B joints here. I was in here, touch with my, my, to too. I like, was in touch with my soft Aaliyah. side. Yo, <laughs> like, if you didn't say that, I would have never even thought that I listened to the juvenile. I'm um, um juvenile. Yeah, Genuine. him too. Juvenile was on the RPT. <laughs> See, I'm going back. I'm going 440 back. Four forty degrees. Time. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, Let's see where mine's at. Yeah, nah. <laughs> I would have never even thought that I listened to the Aaliyah album or yeah. the Genuine album. But this is this. It's not true. We did listen to them albums. Yeah. yeah like, if your girl only knew. To think about. If your girl only knew, man. Don't get it twisted, folks out there. <laughs> right? Most of the shit we listen to is legit, hardcore, authentic, real fucking rap shit. All right, people? <laughs> don't, don't get it twisted that we soft and, you know what I mean? We just, <laughs> genuine. Touch with our feelings. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, I mean, you got to balance it, you know what I mean? But don't get it twisted. Most of the time, we was Annie and up, all right? You know what I mean? <laughs> Even though they only... They dropped that album and retired. I feel like <laughs> that's it not don't true. matter. Right? You, know the, you, know the, you know the type of time we was on, okay? All right. Damn. You know what I mean? Nah, but um, yeah, that's true. That's funny. I almost forgot that. Like, yeah, we we listened to those albums after school. I remember. Everything, everything. Yeah, man. Timberland, Timberland at that time, man. That's a special sound, man. That shit yeah. was hard, man. Yeah, there's a few R&B things, with, but it was far and few in between, though. That's what I'm saying. Like, you didn't have mad. It made me feel stuff. bad because, like, sometimes you are following the producer, yo. Because after album two, man, I, I couldn't really fuck with Genuine no more because he ain't have them Timberland beats. Yeah, I only remember listening to that first. I only remember listening to that first. The um, first album is 100 percent Timberland. The first album. The second album yeah, is it. like. Three song Timberland. <laughs> like, I can't really think of too many other R and B albums we listened to back then. Those two stick out. Yeah. Um, I feel like you did get some one twelve stuff, and I'm just saying that it was probably the singles. Part, Bad I Boy like was strong back you then. You would have scooped it up from Bad Boy. Or yeah, something Bad like Boy that. was strong so back then. Maybe you had some one twelve shit, but like you wasn't buying the Jodeci album. Like nah. we wasn't into it. Like that. <laughs> we wasn't KC and JoJo. <laughs> Yeah, no, like, you know what I mean? Not for them. If they was on a, a feature, like, a I feel like, like Keith this, Sweat like, had a hard jam back in the day. I can't remember. Oh, nobody. Not, <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, like, 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 there's, there's definitely some. Oh, you know what was album I bought? I bought Maya, but I was probably also in love with her, too, though. You did buy Maya. <laughs> yeah, you did. That's true. I don't remember it that much, though. Like, you should have. I, like, I do, though. I do, like, like if I heard it, I'm sure I, I had Cisco's tracks, album. But, um, I had yep, Cisco's Cisco, album. I, re- I remember the thong remember song. Cisco. Yeah, um, but I had. Yeah, I, ain't mad at you. I don't know if I had Drew I Hill. Mad. I don't know if I had Drew Hill's oh, shit. You might have. Yeah, you might have. But yeah, yeah. The, you know that kind of came into my mind. I was like, yo, but did he have that album? Um, but yep, 
Yeah. I definitely that's had Cisco's. Funny. I don't know if I, ha- I yeah, might no, have I had Drew Hill. No, no, I don't no, remember if facts. I had Drew Hill. That's facts. I remember the Cisco. Yeah. The Cisco album. Nah, facts. Yeah. But again, yeah, see, like, after that, I think it'd be hard to even, if there was anything Look, man, else. I, I had zero R. Kelly unless you count the Space Jam album. <laughs> like, that's not a... <laughs> I'm kind of surprised. I'm not, that's kind of surprising now thinking about it. Like, yeah, I'm I, ain't have none. I don't even have any of the, the forbidden Jay Z R. Kelly albums nah. that, that shall be forgotten because they're not on streaming. <laughs> like, like, yeah. like, Most of the collection was rap, though. Most of the collection was. Oh, yeah, yeah, was, yeah. Was real. It was all across the board, too. It was everything that was hot coming out in the mainstream. So it was easier the, back the, then. The, the, the it was easier that we back then. These people. And it was a lot of the underground shit yeah. um, that wasn't, you know what I'm saying, on the radio and stuff. So, yeah, no, it was cool. I always tell people, like, the spectrum of hip hop that I've listened to has just been so wide from the very beginning. You know what I'm saying? Like, we were just, oh, just because the way you were looking at music and then you got your computer and all of this shit. But yeah, we were, ra- I was just raised off just off of a wide spectrum. So we were listening to Nas and Jay-Z and Necro and Ill Bill and, you know what I'm saying? Like West Coast, P just No Limit. It was just mm. all, pretty much anything hip hop we'd listen to from underground to the top, to the top dudes in, in, the, when, in the game at the time. Like we were listening to pretty much, now I'm not gonna say everything, yeah, yeah. but from <laughs> underground to above ground, we were listening to it for sure. And you know, it's funny, a lot of our peers weren't. I mean, mm. a lot of our peers radio play to the radio. Man. Yeah. We argue with them and stuff, but like a lot of people just, I don't know, they just didn't, I don't think had the depth of Mu- what music. We to, music's you know a background saying? accompaniment for their lives at that point. And now that's how you get that stereotype, right person, right? Well, yo, I'm 30 now. I don't really hear new music, right? Because, you know, it wasn't, they weren't about it to begin with, you know what I mean? Mm. So. Right, right. So, yeah. Now you yeah, got to place effort. Yeah, we listen to mad, mad, mad stuff that people just wasn't even up on at all if they didn't chill with. Going against the grain, us. much like the Joe Budden stories you be telling me, going against the grain has never been popular. And, yeah, so wow. anything that we would talk about back then, with the against the anti Jay Z stuff, <laughs> like, that yeah, was, nah, that was really for those that don't know. I led the Holy Wars one and two <laughs> against the against the cool kids at school yeah. who supported the cool kids in hip hop. Um, <laughs> I wasn't I wasn't having it, so I, I defended the underground for a long time. But I remember no, when it was just no, we weren't the popular opinion on none of that shit. You yeah, know what I'm saying so. It's not it like now. A, yeah. The underdog battle, but yeah, we definitely were. Yeah, we were. Oh, I'm arguing, be not like real fighting, but we damn near getting the play fighting shenanigans yeah. over <laughs> that shit, arguing with people. But yeah, no, I would always, we would both always defend the underground and, and lyricism and people that we felt like were just as nice and just didn't get the shine for whatever reason. And yeah, dude, I remember sure. when I thought Eminem was black, right. And I remember reciting those lyrics, and I think it's an easy, cheap example because you know, you know what kind of kid he was. But like the Steven Gonzalez kid, I don't know if I could drop names, but I just did. It's like five thousand Steven Gonzalez's. It's all good. But I mean, like, like, it's a man generic. Ass yeah, yeah. Man. <laughs> like, but I remember singing "My Name Is" right back when uh, Stretch Armstrong played that, and I thought he was black back then. And it was like, what the fuck are you listening to, dog? <laughs> And then I remember months later, they were singing that. And I was like, how do you know that song? And they said, MTV's playing that shit. I was like, what the fuck? And then I found out he was white. And then I couldn't even pronounce his name because I know how to say that thing. <laughs> but the first it, time I heard it was at your house. I actually remember. Armstrong tapes. Yeah, man. The first time I heard Slim Shady. Yeah. At my name is was at your house when it came on. And I remember we were kind of confused. Like. We were just like, what is this like? Yeah. What the heck? It was dope, but it was just like, yo, but yeah, no, I don't think we thought. No one he thought was he was white. No one thought time. he was white. Yeah. I, I didn't even know Armstrong was white <laughs> at the time. Yeah, right, right, right. right. Let, alone, like... let alone what color anyone was. Yeah, we yeah. didn't even have 
you know, like there was no internet, right? So you didn't yeah. get magazines or see these people on TV or album cover or something. Like you didn't see these what these people look like. So. But it's just interesting, like just seeing the same person because it came now for MTV. It's approved now, you know. So yeah, yeah, no, that's <laughs> like, favorite, like, favorite, like, you know. <laughs> I look at them as like the generic cool kids, not in a disrespectful kind of way or, or yeah, not yeah. like a dig or nothing like that, but they were like mainstream kids, I guess. You know what I'm saying? Like they were just the mainstream. And in a lot of different senses, they were like mainstream to me. You, know, you take interpret that how you want, not just in music. Um, but yeah, no, nah, I definitely wasn't on, I don't know. I was never on the popular kid wavelength mm. or any other body shit like we just like the stuff that we like and i didn't really care if it was popular or none of that shit. i didn't like popular kids and popular shit honestly i mean <laughs> i was always anti fucking all of that shit so i feel you know like i feel like you found a way to walk in between the worlds in high school, outside looking in now nah, people respect me that's what it was that's what it was and it wasn't that that's i was what... a tough guy i was just a cool a cool person, you know what I'm saying? So I, I think so, you know what I mean? Now I, I'm definitely a way different. Like after 18, I become a very different person. Mm. Um, but yeah, no, I think I was a cool, a, just a cool general, all around like cool, cool kid. So I chilled with them. I chilled, I chilled with, with, was cool with a lot of people. But I didn't like chill, chill with them either. I could just walk where, like you said, I could walk into any world. I wanted to. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I could be cool with somebody there. It was the Albanian kids, whoever it was, like, I could be cool with you and, and, and go there. Super hood shit. Like, it's a lot of stuff outside of school people I was chilling with that, like, people in school. And I know people in school were doing stuff, too, outside of school that maybe people didn't know at the time and people aren't necessarily always what they appear to be. Um, but yeah, outside of school, like I walked in a bunch of different circles too that people might have not, uh, mm. you know, realized or, or or thought. So yeah, you cool, you cool. That's it. I don't really give a fuck what fucking circle you in or whatever. The fuck. Mm. But I'm not a big, big, big fan of the cool kids. Mm. I don't know. They always. Well, now there are no it. cool kids because I feel like. As big as people can go, you can our bub we can create these bubbles that we'll never see it, you know. Like uh I just didn't know at the time that that wasn't a real thing. I yeah, was yeah. I was always the cool kid, motherfucker. You know <laughs> that's Fuck the mindset to have. That's mean? if you yeah, that's the I've mindset been the you cool have. Kid. Y'all just know what I'm saying, but yeah, no, at the time as a kid, the way we think about stuff, um, you know what I'm saying? I definitely wouldn't say I was the popular type of kid or in school or anything, but I definitely knew a lot of people and people were, you know, generally cool with me. You know what I'm saying? Um, like, I don't know. We were talking about the radio, right? And the cool kids. You know how easy it is right now to live a life? Like, we kind of hear it out of curiosity right now because hip hop. But you know how easy it is to just really go about, like, your whole, like, year of music and not really hear a Drake song, even if he is the number one hip hop guy? It's pretty right. easy. It's pretty easy to just avoid him, you know? <laughs> So it's like, um, yeah, if it wasn't for the fact that, like, I have taken an interest into him, like, now, like, I, I, I probably still not know any of his shit, you know? Because, mm. so, yes, yeah, it's, it's not, there's no radio to have it just be blurted. You, or, you know, they are, but, you know, like, it's just so easy to just not have it be, like, force-fed to you the way it was when yeah, we were Yeah, that's kind of all we had, right? Like, yeah. until the internet kind of comes, right? Like, it's, it's what the radio stations are playing. Yes. Yeah. And and that varied depending on when you were listening to it, but generally, like, not vampire hours was. <laughs> it was still good back then. I think the radio was better than it was as it as it got as it went on. But it was, you know, there were rotations. You know, the game wasn't that much different, but it was still cool because at ten o'clock you have Future Flavors of Molly Mar and they're playing a different kind of stuff. So it still was Something. cool spaces on the radio for you to hear the things that you weren't going to hear during the daytime. I think Future Flavors came on right before Stretch Armstrong, I think. Mm. They came on real late, but few, I remember listening to Future Flavors all the time. Future Flavors, Flavors, Flavors. You remember that? Remember Future Flavors? I remember it, but not like 
in ah, detail and not no i like i remember the name you know who i remember a little bit more is red alert <laughs> like, like, future flavors um, yeah. i know marley mar was on it um i feel like they red alert of, on 5 they p.m a bunch of dope shit played different hip-hop too stretch armstrong always played ill stuff the wake up show right like there was cool you know, pockets where you you still got a lot of cool stuff, and it just seemed like over time, maybe they existed, and I just wasn't listening to radio at that point. Yeah. Um, but it just seemed like over time, every show is basically running the same rotation for the day, and you you know maybe if you listen to Flex, you would hear some new shit or something like that. But it wasn't these DJs with these slots where they're just playing, you know, breaking new shit, shit that you're never gonna hear ever on the daytime yo there's tracks in my memory that i don't know what they're called to this day that i don't remember what they were called shit that i had on tapes i used to record future flavor and there's some shit that like i just don't know it's a song i always remember in my head and the only line i remember is there's a war going on i don't know if that type that shit in google it might be possible to find it now (laughs) i tried looking for it too i tried looking for it and i couldn't i couldn't find it i don't know if it it wasn't the wu-tang but it was like a group of dudes, but I just remember that song coming on, um, and I remember liking it at the time. And I just, I remember at the time I couldn't find it, but I had it taped um, on a tape, tape on a real tape, and yeah, just some stuff from that time just gone. There's I mean, a just... Camp Low remix of Lucini, mm. uh, um, but it's not a popular one. I only ever heard it on Red Alert. I don't think he made it, but I only ever heard, and I never could find it on YouTube till maybe like a year ago. I remember it, and I did find it, and it was like, oh shit! So like every now and then, people be uploading tapes. A lot of like '80s, '70s hip hop, like there's like tape collections of that Grandmaster Flash mm. and stuff like that. Like all that rare stuff, like or DJ Clue tapes, Fifty Cent tapes. They they kind of on YouTube like for now, you know, <laughs> like, like yeah, like, yeah. So there is things. I found I didn't throw them away, but I found what I I found like a bunch of old VHSs in my my in the garage, um, and I'm like, man, part of me is tempted to throw away because I'm like, I'm never probably gonna see these again. But it has things on there that I think might be interesting, like a few like Korean pop music things and stuff like that mm. that I think might be interesting to have, mm. like one day if if I ever like can put shit in you know <laughs> like a thing not even to watch it but just use it you sample have a jordan gray video collection over there not that not in vhs that would, that, be, out, right? <laughs> that would probably be that would probably be on the drive gray video collection you should throw it out those videos were, were nuts they're terrible they have the same argument too that i would say like it's just funny how you get to a certain place in your career and they now used to start magically sounding different. You know, like, 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 mm. like you know who was ill? Now that we on that wavelength, yeah. Was God. Yo, I, I should I, yo, I don't know if I have none of his stuff still, which is pretty funny. Well, him, I don't he's I semi on Spotify. He's semi on Spotify. I gotta look for him. They were, he had some ill beats from I say I semi because they're not they not he not really uh, unless it's been updated. It, he the Japan has not taken so leniently to uh spotify like depending on label especially the older you get like mm. during gray they discography ain't on there like like some of it like especially new shit pretty much everybody everything new there's like a line in spotify like let's just make up 2018 like anything yeah, that yeah, came yeah. out like from there you're all on spotify especially for korean pop music because they were They've, they've, yeah, their time is now versus Man, uh, Japan. I don't think I have none of that because there's, there's been a few hard drive shenanigans over the years. I still got of, all that old shit too, the same ones. Loss of data. I'm trying to see right now if I have. So it. now I it's remember. on here. All that shit is on here for Spotify, but there was times where none of this shit was on here. It was just kind of a best of album for Gak. That's all you had. <laughs> he has some, he has some, um, yeah, some joints. They start in the lighting up as Spotify becomes more pop, pop powerful. Cause look, let me go to the. If I go to the during gray section, it's like this. I don't know. This might be. This might no. There's still one album. There's still one album missing. But it looks like over time they get in there. Like 
Okay, I'm gonna check it out to see if I could pick up some of the songs that I if I hear them I would remember them. I don't remember the names, but I don't I don't see it here, so that must have got lost, lost in time. Um, but yeah, that just hearing Darren Gray, I didn't like Darren Gray <laughs> at the time. I think you liked them. I didn't I didn't think about it musically in that sense. I just remember their videos just being all kinds of nonsensical, just shenanigans stuff. But Gap has some ill piano joints i remember i remember there were a few joints that like yeah i like listening to i remember listening to them like playing rpgs and stuff and just like, some of that stuff, stuff might not even be on a spotify because they might be too um just different like 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 not on albumness you know yeah yeah no yeah. i don't i i don't know nothing about it i was getting yeah. them from you so i have no context into none of this shit i was just getting it from you and listening to them but yeah they were real they were like some of that shit came from his I first like. band, like Malice Miser. I just looked him up. Not even on Spotify. Probably never will be. Like, th- like that. That's the thing, right? Like, I don't know if it's because this is a Western uh, app, right? You should send me that though, too. Like, yeah, like, yeah. Whatever I don't, I won't know exactly, but there's some stuff I imagine. Um, it's part of stuff I like too. Uh, some of it, I'm sure, but yeah. Like, I'm yeah. sure of the piano stuff. But like, see, like Malice Miser, like. I don't even remember what they timeline. If I lived in New York, it's probably the nineties then. So like that's they timeline. Like, but for almost any music, like, right, probably right, sixties and beyond, most of that shit's probably gonna be on Spotify, you know, like like if you're a Western group, you know? But if you're Japanese, like it's man, even more tricky. Yeah, yeah it, it it it's the new shit is probably always gonna be on there. The older shit and it don't, you don't even got to get that old. You can go to 2010 and like, oh, really? Like 2012. Right, right. Oh, really? Like none of that's here? It's kind of, it's kind of trippy. Um, I, on the off chance, I somehow got recommended this thing on YouTube and it was pretty dope. There's this guy, he only plays vinyl and shit. And he was playing like 80s vinyl. 80, actually, I think the, the cover is some crazy shit. It's like 80s female vinyl thing, some shit. And I was like, all right, bet. Let's do this. Like... It's like mad unique. <laughs> like it's just mad, not unique. It's mad niche. It was like '80s, uh, vinyl, like female Japan. You know, I was like, okay, like we're going there. And the first song, I was like, yo, this this beat is hard, yo. I don't know if you, you it's not a beat because it's a rock thingy, but it but it kind of is a beat because it's electronic. But I think it was made in like '85 or '84. And I pull, I try to pull her up, and she actually came up on Spotify. But they only had her album after that year. And I was like, fuck mm. you guys. Fuck you. <laughs> like, so it, label, yeah, certain labels, like, they ain't about that uh, streaming streaming life over there. Darren wow. Gray's number one city <laughs> in Spotify. Santiago, Ch- Chile, I believe. Right? CL means Chile? Right? Mm. What? Santiago, Chile, right? That That's what that is? CL? Yeah, capital of Chile. It. Yeah, capital of Chile. Is it? Okay. Yeah, that's Durin Gray's number one city. <laughs> mm. Tokyo, Durin Japan, then Mexico City, and then some other place in Japan that I can't pronounce, and then Helsinki, Finland. So mm. it's because definitely they... play Ikaruga <laughs> listening to Gap Beats. Mm. Sure. <laughs> that's the thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, I, I used to I used to bump them joints. I don't, it's almost Ika, like calming some of these beats, like. I would probably, that's what now I'm thinking about. I was like, I would probably play some of those in the background while I might just be working or something like that. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, 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 yeah. That's funny. It's funny how we, we're in, I don't know, what was Gap? Korean? Was that K pop? He's Japanese. Japanese? Okay. J pop then? Yeah, I'm going to throw him. Look, uh, yeah, J pop. J pop, J rock, but probably pop because he, he gets too popular. So. I'm gonna throw. This is him. funny how we got there from from underground '90s rap. I'm gonna <laughs> throw. Hey, music's music. That I credit that to Napster because I only listened to hip hop until like I got into the Korean stuff, and then once Napster came, I went everywhere. But you see, Gak remind me of like when when we talk about all these musicians. I don't know what streets Gak grew up in, but it looked like I'm looking at some of these out. He doing albums like he doing the normal music thing. Then after a while, like look, look like '07. Uh, and this is a Spotify discography, but most likely it's pretty accurate. Um, best of the Best, Volume 1, Moon Saga. This is some like, movie soundtrack bullshit. This looked like some Gak Live with a Symphony bullshit. Gak Tracks Ultra DJ Remix. 
Then in 2016, finally an actual album. So it took him like nearly 10 years <laughs> to do another album. Mm. Last Moon, look like he done. You know, <laughs> like, like it just reminds mm. me of some of these other guys. Like, yo, we made it. Kind of good. I'm kind of. I'm not really about doing this music thing. You go to his Instagram. I haven't been on it in a while, but you go to his Instagram. I was like, is this the singer? Because almost every video was him in the gym, like trying. He's not big like The Rock, but he just training all the damn time for some reason. Dude, <laughs> man, this whole thing was so that I could become a cool. I just need enough money, and I don't have to go to work. And now Gax is learning the raging demon. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. It's just remind you know, like we talk all the time, Jay Z, Fifty Cent, like yeah, all right, they get to a certain level. Not really trying to do this music thing forever, you know. So he seemed like one of those people. Like it looked like he'll still play live shows and all that. Like uh, you know, it's a small country. You could do like a few a year and you're good, you know. <laughs> like, mm. but uh, yeah, it, it it don't look like making new music, especially the way we make it and consume it now. I, I, he ain't about that life, you know. Maybe we lucky you, you get like two or three more albums before he dies. That's it. <laughs> like, like, if mm, he's still even mm. about it, I don't even know anything. If he still make music like that, so because it don't look like it. <clears throat> this this kind of a side note brings me to a question for both of us. Mm. I think we just do we navigate too much stuff for like the podcast would be just random, just because we're just like even if we just. We're in the realm of music. Look where this went. We're in J-pop. Like, nobody knows who Gak is. Yeah. I guarantee you, right? Like, most don't know. I wouldn't know who that dude is. if it, But just the breadth of stuff that, like, you know, we've experienced. Not that it's special or that other people don't have that. But um, I wonder if, if, not to, like, to structure, but like if we focus on certain things, you know what I'm saying? Because last time we kind of really talked about games, but we could go into a few different type of things. Like we could sit here and talk an episode of just straight music or just straight games or just maybe some other kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, no, I just feel like, yo, it just, I don't know. We could just talk about so much crazy, you know, crazy stuff from the, from the, what is it? The the FDC? That's what it is. The fighting yeah, fighting game, game oh. land. Yeah, yeah. Right to the BRC. That's the battle rap community. Um, wait, to, wait. Oh, I thought. Wait, <laughs> I was like, they I got heard, acronym. They I got acronym heard, no, I heard R A F T. I was like the battle raft. I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, <laughs> the BRC. The yeah, yeah, raft yeah, 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 yeah. No, so, for sure. For sure. You know, podcasting <laughs> to movies. Uh, you know, all all kind of stuff. Um, yeah, I don't if, know. Yeah, if you tune in, you'll hear you'll hear some 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 ill shit. I'm it's open. Like, I'm open shit. to to whatever, cause like, and I'm open to like to kind of like you like trying to steer that shit in, cause I already tried my way, and probably I was able to get away with freedom on mine because it was a different character every show, you know. So like. Mm. The, that's like an you know, that's like a flip script, so that's different. Yeah, yeah, like, and there's that, there's that too, kind of. But some of them would be pretty chill. Like it was just the fact that like somebody's different, so it almost makes them kind of the thing is, you know, like they're the uniqueness for each that's episode. That's the model. Yeah, like, yeah, you're yeah, interviewing yeah. a new person each time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But for this, yeah, I have no idea. I don't know. I just know like I don't, I don't listen to Joe Budden, but it just looked like, um. I don't listen to Joe Budden enough. I don't hear him when he's complaining, but what it just looked like on that one, like, uh, oh, man, I forgot. It, it, it's sort of free verse, but, like, in the hip-hop spectrum, probably, you know? It is. Um, it, yeah. it, it, it is. It's not messing around and talking, but they yeah. do cover, right, like, highlighted news. I'm not saying that we should, like, yeah. cover certain things. This, this but... is important. This is important to, to our What thing. I envision, though, is because, yeah. right, like, if you look at his thing, there's the pull-up. There's not to make a separate thing, but, like, I don't know. Maybe there's game talk and there's something bold, something else that's, you know, whatever, general. And then, I don't know, maybe there's ones where we just really get into games or that we at least brand it that way, right? Like, the, the and it's the same thing, but if we one week we do, this would be called whatever, music talk, because most of the thing just happened to be about music you know what i'm saying just in this chance or we could have chose to get into it but yeah no because we could kind of 
talk about a few different things to different niches, right? Like that just because, again, we listen to mad rap. We play mad games, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, just all kind of just different stuff, just in the, between the two of us um, in terms of interests and experiences, you know what I'm saying? If we could, if we just left it random, it could be, you never know what the fuck. And that might be kind of cool too. Like, yeah, you don't know what the fuck we might talk about in here. It could be <laughs> literally talking about like historical Marxism sometimes, right? Yeah. Like, Till forest fires and shit in California. <laughs> J pop and Gap yeah. and some shit you've never probably ever heard about, like ever, to why there's fighting mechanics in Street Fighter V suck compared <laughs> to <laughs> Guilty Gear. And right, like we could it's just it, yeah. it, it could be all over the place. So depending when you hear you like, yo, what the fuck are these people talking about? Where are they at right now? So just something to think about but i think there's i think we do exist in like a nice umbrella just for our interest music right games yeah. media at, at the very least and then life i guess right like everything mm. else usually if we're not talking about that is usually about some real shit going on or like you know within ourselves but i think that that's kind of like the main areas we really do talking, right? Like gaming, yeah. music, and, and media kind of thing, comic book, whatever kind of stuff. Game is and funny because we don't even really even play it. We just, we're like, we don't do old, any of these things we, anymore either. We're yeah, two like, old men. Like, man, movies. this shit's dumb. We said that shit. I don't even watch TV no more. I don't even know why I'd be talking about media. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nah, but yeah. Yeah. Um, but you would definitely hear some ill shit. I feel like we'd be having some ill. I was looking real quick takes. for comic book shit, and I guess one of the most important ones, my friend texted me the other day. Uh, I feel one, like this ain't going to be important, but... No, 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 yeah. for comic book world, not for the Wait, world. You being serious? For you being the, serious? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is like, for the comic nah, book you world. You saying that, and it's just like nah, some nah, dumb nah, nah. shit. It's Wonder Woman 84, uh, Wonder Woman 2 got delayed for till Christmas. They, I guess, uh, I don't They're know not if... Having it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, um, the way I interpret that was, is they saw the tenant numbers, and I was like, chill, bro. <laughs> like, oh, so, so, so I didn't hear that. So on that note, <laughs> I saw that Mulan was doing okay. I didn't see numbers, but I remember in an article, the article wasn't even about it. It was actually more about the people boycotting it. Um, But it, it had said with no metrics, so there were no, there were no numbers, but it did said that uh, it did say that there was like a fairly good reception, so I thought that was kind of interesting, knowing that they had the whole thirty dollar that subscription sounds, thing. That sounds, but at the same time, they ain't put nothing, so I didn't know. That sounds no opinionated. Good uh, reception. That means people liked it. Cause and here's the tricky thing: it's hard to tell with that. Cause I try to tell how good it did too. And the thing what they're doing right now, and they're doing the same thing with Tenant. Oh, Tenant is doing no, dope. They're doing what? What? I said bundles, but I was just kidding. Well, you're not wrong. It is a bundle. <laughs> it is a bundle. Because they bundling all... I just want to know how good or bad tennis do in America. Like, yo, that's cool, bro. But, yo, it made $60 million worldwide. Did you know? I'm like, that's cool. How much it made in America? But it made $60 million worldwide. Like, you know, so I'm trying to get the numbers. It's like Joe Budden right now. Like, they don't want to give you the real number. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, same thing. Worldwide. I'm trying to find US. out what Mulan yeah, US did US with Disney+. Plus. What did Mulan do with Disney Plus? Yo, it made like 40 million worldwide. I'm like, how much did it make off of Disney Plus? It made 40 million worldwide. I'm like, what yeah, are you doing? Yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> like, like, yeah, yo, yo, <laughs> look, the US is in the world. Right? Like, <laughs> like, like, <laughs> right? Yeah. Huh? Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, that's what, that's what I'm saying. And you know what's funny about that? Because I remember us talking about it. I feel like you were on the other side. But magically, after that first weekend, I don't know if this lets you know they're doing real good or bad. They were like, yo, December Mulan is dropping free. Like, like for the normal. What I tell you, man, what I said, right? Like, I told no, but I told you, like, if you just wait long enough, it will be free. They have to, but they have they have to do that. Like I was saying what they they shouldn't have charged. I don't know about $30. That's but this is what I think. <laughs> that is the play that makes. That that that's like the only thing you can't. You so you're gonna keep it unlocked for me forever. I'm a subscriber to this shit every month. That's the way like it was after, kind of announced. Um, that's that's the way it was announced. 
They didn't say nice. forever, but they said you had access to it as long as you're a subscriber. So if you stop paying, you lose, even though you gave them 30 bucks. <laughs> That's that's a different scenario. <laughs> that is also because you should be able to download it if I buy yeah. it. If y'all, that's different. Yeah, that's a little weird, but that would be weird if they just if I'm a subscriber and y'all just never unlock Mulan for me. Like that's what I was saying. Like I think thirty dollars was a steep price, but for any of the companies that are thinking about releasing their stuff, I think that they should. You know what they could do. Whatever that window is, normally from a movie being in theaters to like going on the platforms, usually for rent first, if you're on Amazon, and then, you know, whenever, then at some point they're just on kind of everything at that point. Like maybe yeah. extend that period, maybe make that period a little bit longer and charge people for the early access for it. And then after I that, mean, for them, thirty dollars is early access. <laughs> thirty dollars is not. Nah, see, yeah, no, nah, they did it. They they went a little duke with it. I mean, I think <laughs> I think ten dollars. You know, a movie ticket joint. Yeah, thirty that. bucks is Disney price. But man. I guess see, see, you know what? <laughs> you know what? Here's the counter argument to that, though. Because if you went to the movies with two, three people, yeah, you would have paid thirty dollars. Yeah. So is the presumption? And you could watch it again. You know, no, at the movies you can't. No, but I mean, by you giving thirty dollars and you can watch right. it again, so it's not. You get the not, food. You could pause and piss. You... you know how big a feature that is. Pause and piss. That's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> that's, that's, yeah. If you if you if you're comparing it to the movie theater experience and just looking at the thirty dollar price tag and you thinking about the movie Mulan, which means it's probably an an adult and at least one kid, right? So at least two people. Probably. Um, so right, that's probably 30 bucks off the bat at any movie theater. Maybe matinee, maybe it's 20, maybe I don't know, right? But you might you're probably gonna spend at least 15, 20 bucks for two tickets, yeah. Right, for, for an adult and a child. So, right, with none of the options and features, there's no piss and pause, there's no <laughs> there's no replay, right? You you can't come back in the theater afterwards. So, in a sense, yeah, I know it's kind of crazy, thirty dollars, <laughs> but if you're looking at it as a substitute or in place for the movies, especially for that one, like it's not crazy because people, if you were gonna go to the movies for Mulan, yeah, you were probably gonna pay thirty dollars anyway. Because you're probably in a family. Movies. Yeah, right, right. So um somebody told me they saw Mulan too, but I they saw downloaded it. it. No, I thought I oh, saw man. it. You I think that was you, maybe. Maybe that yeah, was you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, Josh, no, nah, Josh told me. Okay. Because he got yeah, he he um you know got daughters and stuff. So I think he he but he downloaded the thing for 30 bucks. It sound it sounds steep for me. That's what it is. So for my purposes, I'm like, absolutely. It is steep. Not. It is steep. Um it's it, cause you mentioned the daughters. Um What's his? Oh yeah, yeah. Mark Mark Bernard and on, on Kevin Smith. So he he felt like you know in the movements that we're in right now. Like had that been able to be in the theater, you know, with in a post, right? Crazy rich Asians world, right? And you know the thing, like it probably would have done really well, you know. <clears throat> like almost a lot of the big Chinese actors were in there. Jet Li's in there. He don't do Jet Li things, oh, wow, but he's I in there. He's the emperor. Okay. He just he does emperor get okay. kidnap things. I didn't know that. But uh, he's yeah. In. I'm sure. I'm sure. It's what Donnie Disney Yen's does, in there. You know what I'm saying. Um, thirty dollars just looks crazy on the on the Netflix screen. Like that's not a number that I see up there. Yeah. See, it's different too. Because if I went to the movie theater with Orion and they were like thirty dollars, I would I would have been like, what the hell's going on here? What, <laughs> what's, what's what's happened? You know what I mean? Like. It would be very standard, but how often do you see a twenty nine ninety nine buy or or whatever click now for the thing? Unless you're buying it from Amazon, that's the only place I see it is Amazon. Actually, mm. that is the only place where I, where I'm familiar with. I think YouTube too, but I don't use YouTube like that. Where you can just outright buy the film. You could rent on Amazon if it's not Prime, or you, you could buy it on Amazon, right? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But you own it at that point. Like you, this one is just weird. Like I don't know. I don't like that twenty nine ninety nine. I'd have been rolling for it's, like. It's just the watch it right now price. That's it. 
That's it, all it'll it is. Work, it, it'll work. I think. I think for for certain things, it'll work. So I think for things that Disney owns, yeah, it's Black Widow. Let's get that. Know, out there. Let's, let's get that Marvel as as shit. Did let's get <laughs> that kind of stuff. People are gonna pay. Like we we went over this last time with the if Infinity War had come out like this, and I said, you know damn well, you would have paid another. Seven ninety nine the next day to watch that shit again because I know I would have they would have got they they would have got twenty dollars they would have got some dollars out of me if that came out and movie theaters wasn't it wasn't a thing because they got probably twenty dollars out of me something like that when I went to the movies anyway but now in the comfort of my home like, I might have clicked that shit again yeah. right after it went off right after it went off I might have been like yo I'm gonna watch this shit again. I don't know. You don't think so? You would have watched it the next day. <laughs> you would have. You did. You seen it multiple. You this just remove the spending money aside because you'd be ending up going to the movies free a lot of the time. But let's say you know what I'm saying, like because you saw it multiple times in the theaters. Yeah. For a reason, you wouldn't even if you didn't care. Unless you were just bored, why would you go to see a movie that you don't want to see again just because it's free? Like I would just like no, no, I'm not going back. To see fucking um, whatever fucking movie. I'm not doing Even that. stuff I like, I barely see again, you know? So. Yeah, but but I'll, I'll, yeah, no, nah, that one, if the, I, it depends on the price. Like if it was $29.99, like, no, I'm not watching <laughs> this shit again tomorrow. Absolutely not. You know what I mean? But, yeah. You know, if they, if they made that joint like $5.99, like who knows? I might have seen it, rented it for me, might have rented it again for Tab or whatever. Who knows? You know what I'm saying? It's different. It's just it's just different. People come over, like, yo, we need to watch Infinity where you ain't see the shit, yo. Uh, it's it's hard, bro. Blah, 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 blah. It's you know hard. what I'm saying? Yeah. So <laughs> you they it might have I don't know how it would pan out, but I think for certain things, you know, it's just gonna they, they can make it. They could find some way to make it work with mm. the new release kind of shit. But what did t- what did that movie, what did Tenant do? I was about to say um ten cent, which is funny, but yeah. Yeah, ten. Well, ten cent made all the money, right? Because they own everything. But I mean, like, <laughs> um. So yeah, I I, I did see a, a article for for tenant. But re- before we go to that, uh, uh, I'll do baby review of uh of Mulan. I was like, what's the movie? Again? <laughs> I was like, I love that you could you could still get that under the mask. That's dope. <laughs> That's not- <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is made for for the battlefield. You know? <laughs> I'll be able to do certain things. Um, you know I mean? So, yeah. All right. Here's spoilers. Anyone? You don't want to hear spoilers. Maybe fast forward this shit. Um, I don't care about none of them. I Disney know you movies. don't care. I'm just no saying shit. Against. It's probably oh, not oh, even, that's right. that's it's probably right, not yeah. even real, real spoilers, to be honest. But honestly, this movie remind me of the same feeling I got for Black Panther. It's probably not cool to say right now, considering like Chadwick just died. That you don't like. like but I remember the first time I saw Black Panther in the theater, I was super fucking disappointed. And it's because I had expectations. Like, I wanted dope superhero shit. I wanted dope Marvel shit. But I saw it the second time with my family. Just like you was talking about repeat viewings, right, with different people. I mm. saw it the second time with my family. And I, I thought that shit was dope as fuck. Because now I knew it wasn't going to be a cool superhero movie. It was going to be something else, you know, with family and, like, black people struggles done in, like, this whole artsy way and whatnot. Um, and that's cool. Um but I feel the same thing with Mulan and that, like, uh, and I still stand by this, even though I like Black Panther now. Black Panther is whacking that fucking movie. <laughs> like, he don't do nothing mm. cool. Like, 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 and when I say that, I mean Black Panther himself. Like, T'Challa has all the cool scenes versus Black Panther. It's pretty fucking boring, you know, <laughs> like, mm. like in that movie, you know, let alone everyone around him is also doing much cooler things than Black Panther himself. So to me, like, it was real bad, like, for him, for Black Panther himself, you know? Mm. In terms of just wanting to see cool shit and cool superhero shit, right? We get in the Marvel shit. We get evil Black Panther. It's like, oh, my gosh, and blah, blah, blah. So it was the same thing with this one in that, like, the story is cool. You know, I get all emo, and I like that. Um, maybe if I saw it a second time, I might like it better. But, yo, Mulan kind of whack, like, like her, the person like she is whack though you saw the original no i didn't she she don't do nothing cool you do nothing cool you you watching something that's oh she's like and here's the thing i've never seen mulan yeah 
I was going to bring an a interesting point up. The, what I did see of Mulan was a song that takes that's in the original Mulan, and it's like one of the dudes. It's, it's called, no like, singing in this, by the way. It's just a movie in this one. Right, right. Yeah, so yeah. most of the Disney joints are essentially musical cartoons, right? Like yeah, yeah. Musical, basically. But there's a song in the cartoon, and, and it's a dude that's training her, I guess, for whatever battle they're preparing. It sounds like they're fighting the Mongols or the Mongolian. I don't know what's going on. Yeah. But the song is called I'm going to make a man out of you, which I thought was super interesting in the present day because Mulan is a female. I feel like female that idea is, is there, and they have, they probably do say that. You know, but no, the song, yeah, yeah. if you look it up, is literally like, I'm gonna make a man. No, out I know, of you. I know, yeah, that's hilarious. That shit was not <laughs> to me. This dude is immediately getting canceled. Yo, it um, might, it might for the purpose of no, the no, whole no. movie. For the movie, it makes sense. <laughs> yeah. I, I, get, I understand the movie, it's yeah, also yeah. taking place like literally historically, it's supposed to be in a very far away time. So, there's a lot of that, yeah, uh, right, right. It's, it's just, it's just all sorts of things are different, but. Yeah, I, I didn't, I've never seen it, but my take from just hearing that song is, all right, like, the enemy's coming. She sucks. She needs to get trained up to be ill. I presume she ends up doing this later on in the, right? Like No, but, I mean, she's just whack in general. Being. Like, she, like, she's boring. She's, for some reason, she's dope. Like, but she doesn't do anything cool for me, you know? Like, she's not doing badass. She's just kind of the one and... If she's true, the song it seemed like she was trash though. Like she was just trash. Like she wasn't even trained, and maybe she became ill later on in the movie. But what I saw was just like in the movie, she's like always a G, and and yeah, she (laughs) holding back because she don't want to stand out. And the more she kind of stand out, the 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 more attention to her. But the more she stand out, the more like she has to be true that she's a woman and not a man in this one. (laughs) But um. But I'm just saying, like, just her, like, her at her full Mulanness, like, she kind of just boring. Like, she ain't doing, like, I don't know, I'm cool things, you know? It's just like, mm. all right. So, like, that part was whack. And at first, I thought this was whack, too, but I think I appreciated it later on in retrospect when I was doing, like, the storyboard thing in my head. Like, the bad guy's trash. The bad guy's mega fucking trash. And it's funny, because there's a movie, right? We're doing the woman empowerment thing. But the the... There's the there's the bad guy who's like a loser and then he has like um this witch girl, right? I guess she is a witch, right? And she's the real reason the bad guys even have any like power, you know? And and the whole time I'm like, man, yo, like how you got like this movie's so fucking weird. I'm like, Mulan sucks. Then you got this witch who's kinda like Michael Jordan, but like but because we're still living in a man's world, even as the bad guy I'm like, she's bowing down to men because she knows she can't do it without them. And I'm like, what kind of bad guy would still bow down to people? But at the same time, right, that's the mind fuckery that could still happen, right? Um, you, you get what I'm saying by that, right? That it, or they're trying to tell a story, yeah, too. Or they're trying to maybe, tell you a narrative. No, like, but I'm like, you, you could have just, I, I don't know. I was just like, you could have just had like a strong, bad woman. Like, she could have just been. Yeah, no, yo, look. look, wait, wait, look hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me finish her thing. Let me finish her thing. But what they do that's cool at the end, and this is why I said the mental fuckery going on, right? Like, even when you're rebelling, right? Because she, she ends up telling Mulan, like, she goes bad because the more true to herself she was and like being a strong woman, the more society rejected her, right? But she still kind of carries with her, that hurt with her, even as a bad person, that she's still going to put herself below men, right? Um, but what's interesting there is that she tries to convince Mulan um, to join too, because she sees Mulan as a strong woman, like, society will never accept you. You might as well just come to my side. So when she sees Mulan having success at the end... Um, that's the thing that kind of it's like she That's does, inspiration for yeah, her. To, she to, does. To, she to, never to had the right. self. But she thought Mulan was gonna lose because just woman can't do it, you know. But when she sees that, she's Seeing's like, believing. Yeah, Seeing's yeah. Believing. Seeing's, Seeing's believing. believing. So like, if you I can't imagine it, and somebody show it to you. Now you could. Now you've seen it. Yeah, yeah. Like if you can't see it yourself without somebody showing it to you, then you might need somebody to show it to you before you believe. That is real. So I, I appreciated her, that whole thing. Like after that, after once I put that all in context, I was like, I right, thinking about good. you thinking about our other conversations though. When you, I just want at it a like dope. That. Well, so here's this that led me to the. Other no, thing. I'm saying you appreciate it because of yeah, because uh, the power of the mind and all that shit. 
Yeah. Bang, bang, no one's probably going to get that. No one's probably going to get that. What I wanted to say is because you were just like, she's a bad guy that's bad. I'm down. Let me be the first to say. <laughs> Man, I'm always for Team Good Guy. Captain America yeah. all the way. You know what I'm saying? However, there's the dark side of me, and I like my bad guys dark and as cold as they so, come. So, this is what I, I was like going to say. This is what I, I was like going to say. I like Thanoses. <laughs> I like people that don't. They don't care what the price is. This is a stone. Th- this is what I was gonna say. Guy. You got a problem. I brought this argument to my my sister. Like, yo, so is there like? I feel like we haven't gotten the awesome bad woman right in the world right now, where we're getting these dope like the female heroes, right? They won't put that. I'm like, where's the awesome female villain? Elena. What? Who? Elena was was. I like her, um Helena. Oh, I was all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was better. That's better. I was, I was, I was like, who, Elena? Oh, wait. I was what? like, that was, that was my this, ex. This, like, back. I was like, man. Elena. I was like, Elena. Yeah. I, said, I was thinking about somebody else. Uh, <laughs> like, but yeah, get this, get this hammer out of here. I'm killing everybody. First off, everybody's dying. I, I feel you. And based on the fact that they lose their planet and shit, I guess... She's kind of destructive. Yeah, man damage. Man damage. Man. You know what I mean? Come on, man. She kind of she kind of body and everybody. Yeah, Hulk got to go Hulk. Yeah, yeah. So I get it. Everybody, get out of here. Ruthless too. Ruthless. I feel I, feel, I don't know. I want like this I want like the fucking top. I mean, I got you know, I guess she don't do it for me like that. But but I I get like I want somebody back cuz I feel like we got like a lot of dope heroines. You got like Kill Bill, right? Um you got people from now, Wonder Woman. Of course, you got the OGs, you know. Those like, are some ill villains, but Bill was the main villain, so they were supporting villains. So, yeah, okay. Like, For kill Bill. But I'm like, yo, man, like, in a world, this new Batman movie, right? Like, we got the same old fucking losers, right? We got Riddler, which at least may, it looks like they're making him hush, so that's kind of cool. But we got Riddler, we got shitty Penguin, and we got sh- shitty uh, Catwoman, you know? And I, I don't mean their portrayals. I just mean that we're doing them for the 400th time. And I'm like, after seeing that uh, Harley Quinn show I told you about, I'm like, yo, Poison Ivy could get her whole own movie. Because I feel like they'll probably never make her as strong as Swamp Thing. But I'm like, yo, like, what's the difference between those two? Like, Swamp Thing's essentially like a god, you know, like the way they paint him in the comics. And I'm like... She could be like almost a goddess, like type, like if they let her too, you know. And then she has that whole twisted story of like she ain't exactly bad. She just don't really like people fucking up the environment. So she going about right. it in a sick, twisted way, you know. <laughs> and when we do get a female villain, I feel like it's never developed a whole lot. Like so, if you and and I'm gonna use bad movies as an example, and they're not really female in a sense. So in the Phoenix thing, right? Like the oh, scroll, the scroll bad guy, right? Like you're already like, oh, man. right? The, man, the, man, the, main, the main bad guy is like in, in a Phoenix. The main bad soul, guy right? is the writer who wrote that movie. Yeah, that's, that's, that's fact. That man that's hates fact. humanity. That's fact. They are the main villain in that movie. But, right? Like it's not to what is not to what you're saying. Like yeah. we have we do have it a lot on. Um, Helen is the only one that I could think of in recent time that I remember feeling too. I'm like, damn, man, she's this is type ill. Like, this is kind of a bad. She didn't come to mind, guy. but technically, like, yeah, on all her fights, she just always comes out on top pretty easily too. But, you know, but, like, also, but it wasn't just that she won; it was yeah. the demeanor. Like she was cold bad. She right? had no mercy, yeah. unlike yeah, the rest of the I'm family. I'm gonna show you the truth. She ripped the top yeah. of the thing, yo. You, you get you. you She's angry at everybody are? for being soft. And yeah. y'all dying, and I'm bodying all y'all too, and I don't care. Like this Asgard shit, yo. Whatever the fuck, unrelenting. There's no negotiating. There's nothing. There's nothing happening with it. There ain't no negotiating with Thanos. There's no negotiating with her. There's no negotiating at all with, to, with like, I don't like wishy-washy bad guys. Like, I just, you know, this is funny too, you're going to lie. I just saw Spider-Man 3. Oddly <laughs> enough, it's not the, this is the Venom Sandman version. Yeah. Green Goblin, Spider-Man team up. Terrible. I watched it. I was like, yo, what? <laughs> yo, this is nuts. You know, like, it was just so, it was just so nuts in some ways. Um, But those bad guys. And I know that's coming from that thing, so it was fine. Um, but like, I just I don't know. Like, I don't like soft, 
soft bad guys. Like who likes that? They don't give no. They don't give the good. The, you know I don't like it because they don't give the good guys a challenge. Mm. Look at all of the dope superhero movies. The good guys are always put to a tough test in the story to me. Like or I'll say I tend to like the stories where the good guys are really tested. Mm. Infinity War, mm. right? Um, the, the Dark Knight, even Batman Rises. To, um, the Dark Knight Rises yeah, to yeah. a certain extent, right? Like you have these bad guys that they're not moving for you. The good guys are gonna have to like figure it, really figure this shit out. These people ain't playing no games, and they don't even care about some of the generic shit or they causes this or that. Like right, like these dudes are stones. They ain't no same move. You gonna have to kill them. Mm. You gonna have to kill them. Chop his head off, literally. <laughs> right? Like those are the type of dudes I like because it forces, it creates dilemmas and moral, right? Like moral conflict, these situations. <clears throat> right. Like now you have to watch the good guys. How do they deal with something like that? How do you deal with evil in the form of the Joker? That there ain't no rhyme or reason to this shit. This shit is just cause it's just chaos. I ain't asking for ransom. There ain't no morality to it. What is a good what is a good guy faced with it? And look at the problems Joker has. Look what look what takes place in the movie. Mm. Look what has to happen to fight the Joker. Look all the people get twisted, bent out of shape, the Harvey Dent City. Look, look at what had to have to be given up to fight something. I like seeing that kind of stuff. Look at what has to happen in Infinity War. Look at all that has to happen when you're really going up against real evil. Look what happens when you're going up against Helena or people that are that hard. To go. You just you just yeah. don't see the clean. Well, I always like to, to see the good guys win. I like it to be realistic, too. It ain't always just the picture of Sonny and Roses. Like You get to see the good guys struggle, and you get to see them overcome. But I like to still see them really face a challenge. I don't, I don't want a mirror match. <laughs> I don't want I don't want like the simple bad guy that's there for this simple reason. I want to rob the bank or take all like nah fuck that shit. Half the universe gotta go. I'm balancing this shit. And I ain't stopping for nobody. And I got three of the gems already. Mm. What's up? That's <laughs> that's some ill because it makes for a good. All of those movies are dope. Infinity War, all of the movies I said are pretty dope superhero movies, and they all have their issues in some way or another, but they all have pretty dope bad guys. The Joker, Bane, Thanos, Helena. Go to a bat. If you want a good, if you pick out any good, most good superhero movies, I bet you the bad guy's dope. I bet you the bad guy's dope. The original Batman, which is all sorts of shenanigans. Ew. Why Jack Nicholson's the bad guy? And the way he had them portrayed, he's a nut. Civil War. <laughs> That's th this one's different because the it's not they not so much fighting evil, right? Like, uh, but, Iron Man yo, seemed pretty check bad it, to me. Check it though. <laughs> the bad guy, the bad guy in that movie, yeah, was cold too. Yeah, because he was the dude that lost his family, so he had completely. It was no. It was nothing left to talk to that dude about. He might as well have been Thanos without the gems, as far as his mind. Yeah. Right? Like, y'all killed my family. The new balance. This is Avengers happening. balance. And this is not <laughs> even coming from no dude with gems. Yeah. Or some out of the past. Or this isn't even no super powered kind of crazy person. But the let, like, right? The, where they were coming from, where the bad guys coming from, and how bad they are, how they really going to. Where they're, I don't know. I think that really makes for the ills. And look at what they look. You look at the bad guy in Civil War, the true bad guy, and look at what he does. They don't give a fuck at the end. Y'all could kill me. Yeah, they can't win. It's mm. already done. He tell them something like that. Like I already, I already got what I wanted. Y'all He tells that to Black Panther. He tells that to Black yeah. Panther. Mm. Fuck y'all. It's over with. Those is the. That's evil, or not? And I wouldn't say that dude was evil, all right? Like that's those are the bad guys, not this dude with the shark tank tricks and 
I got your suit now, and I'm gonna dangle your girl up <laughs> above above the city Yo, to like, lure you in. Adam West, me and Adam West, Batman. Batman. <laughs> and, right? Like this isn't right. This isn't <laughs> this isn't crazy. They don't stew his stew his daughter off a cliff. Hey man, it's sacrifices. Right? I don't care if Captain America come up to me. You kidding me? All the Earth's defenders could come up here. I just threw my daughter off the cliff. To it. So in case anybody don't think that I ain't serious about none of this, people's getting killed over this. Mm. People I love. What kind of bad guy is that? That's, that's I'm telling you. If you look at a lot of the movies you don't like, I bet you the bad guys are trash. That's probably true. trash. All of the Spider-Man joints. <laughs> most of most, most of them. Because some of the bad guys are actually okay. But like, look, confusion with Venom and Sandman. Terrible bad guy. Spider-Man's challenge is trash. The story's <laughs> trash. I don't really like Green Goblin or Dr. Octopus, but I, I thought those movies were great at the time. I don't really remember them, and I'll give them a pass too for being yeah. early, but they're probably like more in the generic you know, more on the like oh, okay kind of side, but I mean, if you want that real ill, that real ill struggle, you need you Magneto have, in you know, every you movie. Have, you have <laughs> Daredevil, <laughs> Daredevil versus the Punisher. Daredevil, what was that season two? Yeah, right. Like you gotta, you gotta have the chat. And, and Punisher's not a, a bad guy per se. It's Daredevil. He was a bad guy, but look at the challenge. Look at his motivation. The, the Punisher's not moving for you. He's going to kill you. He shot you in your head already. Yeah. So had Daredevil's helmet not worked in his favor, the Punisher murdered the Daredevil, essentially. <laughs> this is the level of bad guy that you're facing. They're not going to dangle you up over a shark or have a timer running out. Nothing. The Punisher see you, he's trying to blow your, blow your head off. It's he a similar concept. But uh, I told you I saw Superman, Man of Tomorrow, animated. And, you know, like I said, it's a year one uh, story for Superman. But, yeah, in that one, Lobo comes hunting for the last Martian. He's not even the main bad guy, but he comes hunting. And same thing. He doesn't really care about the the casualties outside of Superman. And so there's a lot of extra weapons being used, you know, because he's just trying to get business done, you know. So. Right. Yeah. Right. And 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 the and I was also say in a lot of the movies that I'm talking about, the bad guys also had a lot of development. Marvel is really good with doing that, but we don't always get to see the villain necessarily we want to see. But think of the Joker's development, right? Like yeah. you you get attached to that character at the movie. He ain't just some nigga that appeared the last ten minutes of the movie, or it's really this guy and. Like you kind of go along with Joker's madness. You there for his his side of the tape. Infinity War. You could argue, right? You kind of made the point that this is Thanos' story. The first one, right? Like this is the story of Thanos' path. And you get to see, right, like where he's kind of coming from. Bane. There's a lot of the development. You get to really see these bad guys. I'll say that Killmonger was a good bad guy in the sense that like the way they developed him, but when you finally see him and it's just a mirror match of Black Panther, right? Like it, you, you, it, it's kind of anticlimactic. But as far as like watching a bad guy, like he was an ill, he was an ill bad guy. You know what I mean? You know who's not a cool bad guy? I think like Ego. <laughs> that wasn't a cool bad. I just, I didn't really like that. You know what I'm saying? So there's, I don't know. I feel like. <laughs> You didn't like him having sex with, with with everybody. <laughs> As a, mm -hmm. You didn't like him having his evil plan was to the have sex with everybody. Was, was nuts. I just <laughs> what am I? It just didn't. This is what I'm saying. Like it was no stuff like that nah, lost I'm me. Not, just not, just based on the fact that what's that actor's name? Uh, um, Kurt Russell. Stuff like that lost me. That was nuts too. That was because nuts. I, I wanted ego the planet, and instead I got. Snake Plissken, you know. Like, <laughs> snake from the snake from LA. I got the Snake Plissken. <laughs> got snake. You got M M M what's his name? McCurdy and the thing. Like, yeah. what? Yo, Tango and Cash. I got Tango and Cash up in the <laughs> Yo, and we all know who Is Russell he in Tango Cash? I'm not looking. I'm Russell Simmons. Jeez. Look yeah, look at that. <laughs> That's how messed up it got you. 
But we all know who he is. You can't make him eat. Like, that's don't do that. That's like making Miley Cyrus, Freddy Krueger, or something like that. Like, this is this Yo, is nuts. I'm gonna try. Huh? I'm gonna try to wrap yeah. up the movie stuff because we gone. We gone a bit. Going back to the original thing, Wonder Woman got pushed back. <laughs> So mm, mm, mm. I'm trying. I'm skimming this article, but Wonder Woman is owned by Warner Brothers because DC, and I guess they own Tenant. So right there, we was talking about Tenant numbers. Uh, that might tell you, uh, you know, <laughs> like maybe Tenant numbers yeah. not so right, good. Right, right, right. But uh, here, here is their uh, what is it? Press release. Patty is an exceptional filmmaker. Right there. I don't know what that has to do with anything, but but but. <laughs> The director is mm-hmm. badass. They're just not even talking about the movie. And with Wonder Woman 84, she has delivered a credibly dynamic film that moviegoers of all ages around the world will love. Uh, we're very proud of the film and look forward to bringing it to audiences for the holidays. Yeah. Tenant bombed. We're going to pray Christmas doesn't bomb. <laughs> that's, that's how I read that. That's how I read it. They tried to just throw in like, yo, we're not going to waste this talented female. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We can't do that, you know what I mean? So we're going to hold off. But yeah, it was probably here. Sales. It might yeah. tie into this other article. Warner Brothers won't share tenant box office data angering rival studios. See? Just like I told you, Ooh, it, made, data wars. it made 60 million uh, worldwide, right? Data share. Data share. <laughs> so, so you need to know. Yeah. But, um,. That, that one looks pretty good. But yeah, I don't know. I think that good movies just have like good stuff in it too at the end of the day. Like good characters and good stuff. But yo, if, if bad guys aren't cold, yeah. I think you end up with a shitty movie. I think shitty bad guys lead to shitty challenges and like not serious movies. So like, and it's outside of comic books. Like the reason the Terminator is so ill is because of the bad guy and his motivation to kill. He's not going to stop. There's not no, right? Like it's an immovable object that the good guys just it's just they just gotta figure it it, it ain't gonna be you get arrested is not some wishy-washy kind of shit um yeah like i don't know like stefan wolf should be one of these people right like, <laughs> he, he should be <laughs> he should and he kind of acts like one in in the what was that the justice league movie right yeah but they don't develop him this dude is just a random crazy. He's looking doing dude it for mother. He's doing it for mother. This is all. This is all I know. This is all I know. Mother, give me the boxes. No emotion or nothing. He just he spaz out. Don't get it twisted. When he see the box, he gonna try to go in. But like I don't even know. I don't have no. It's just a maniac. I don't know. He. I don't, I don't even, know even what think you doing. ever saw the trailer too for the new one, right? They don't even explain really in it what he wanted them for. No, but you never saw the trailer, right? For the new uh, Justice League, right? I didn't know. Nah, you need to. But it'll be after this. But we're going to try to wrap this one up. I don't think I need to do that. Yeah, yeah, my last comment is look. Do it. Do it. The Stephen Wolf, and look, they got to develop and make just good stories. But I'm just saying, if you look at movies, if the bad guy was weak, Usually the movie ends up being weak if it's one of these good guy, bad guy kind of things. I'm just saying they didn't develop Stephen Wolf. Random dude asking for boxes. There's no story. There's no attachment to him. There's no nothing. Yeah, he's mad OP, but that's just mad generic. It's trash. And it's whack. And so that movie's whack. Because they're fighting nothing. They fight in strength, basically. Like, mm. who cares? The bad guys are usually always more stronger than the bad guys, right? Or else we wouldn't be watching none of this shit to fucking begin with, right? So if all they got to do is go against his power, that's why. That's why. It's the end of Wonder Woman right there. It's the- <laughs> you got to be going against some 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 ill will, some ill bad guy. But yeah, that's, that's it. I mean, that's it. On that. If we had time, I would dope. I mean, I guess in theory we do, but I don't want to dive more into it. Halle Berry recalls fights with brian singer on x-men movies so what the fuck you what, what the fuck you doing that's what, what she was saying <laughs> why not have me here can i leave can i fire my agent is this x-men 
Did you read the comic? Who am I playing? No, I'm just kidding. But yeah, <laughs> she probably did say that. Like, what the fuck is this? Like, you know, I'm Halle Berry, right? Like, <laughs> Got me up mixed up in this stupid shit. <laughs> and why is mad scenes why Cyclops get kidnapped? I it was guess. probably one where she was in the class and shit and they wrote it out later on. Like, why y'all got this in here so much? I have a lot of compassion for people who are struggling with whatever they're struggling with and Brian struggles. <laughs> Boy, he does. <laughs> reading comic books. That's what he struggled with. <laughs> Struggle with reading. And source material. That, that's his biggest... What did she say he struggles with? I'm just messing around. <laughs> is it like a real mental health thing? I mean, if it's... I don't know, but it is funny because I know, like, he wasn't always there. And it's just funny, her quote is sometimes because... You don't need to tell me, don't need to tell me he wasn't all there, man. You don't need, no, 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 not that part. Way. He literally ain't there, though. Remember, like, because all the other people are complaining about him that he was never on set when he made any of his movies, you know? Even though he's the director. <laughs> yeah. He on some production, huh? He on some apocalypse now. Tell me, yo, just have yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> just hit record. <laughs> yeah, let the, you know, let that you, you ain't never heard those baby. stories. Olivia Munn said the same thing. A few other guys, like Kevin Smith, confirmed it for some other like people. Like the crew confirmed it. Like he just don't be on set for the movies that he's filming. He 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 he's credited director, but he just never show up. Yeah, no, we're a salute. Whoever made X-Men, then I don't know who's struggling. But so it's just mad salute. funny because she says sometimes because of whatever he's struggling with, he didn't always feel present. It's like it's like read between the lines. Yo, sometimes <laughs> yeah. we just let the camera roll and was improvising with the X-Men. I'm just letting y'all know. You know what I'm saying? Oh, uh, see, Nate. Yeah. But and my last take on that is, is, is P. Charles. That's all I'm that's all I'm gonna say. I don't think I don't know if he had anything to do with that one, but I'm just saying, P. Charles. You That's, texted you know me. What that means nah. P. Charles, come on, you forgot P. Charles already. What's Professor that? That's X's twin brother. Oh, that yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> that's, that's, that's crazy. crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> I forgot about that. Why'd you bring? I didn't even yeah. know that because man, I didn't, that's yeah. some shit I had to like Google and shit. <laughs> like like I, I probably could watch that movie again and wouldn't notice it. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like, yeah, I don't remember that happening. I was like, wait, what? Like this didn't happen in the movie, but yeah, word. Um, Go ahead, you sorry. you texted me this shit, but. And this is kind of like almost sad because I'm trying to like speed run it. So it's probably not something to speed run because I don't even know the rules. I don't know if I want to go into it. But uh, the name of this this topic is why the Oscars diversity rules should be embraced by all members. Oh, my gosh. That that thing looked crazy. I don't I don't know. I don't like the way that sounds. Like, cause you, you gotta read about me. it. Um, yeah. Somebody, uh, Christy Alley commented on it. I think I seen a headline that said it was a disgrace, but. It, but the the surface thing, because I don't read too much, I don't really care too much about the awards. But just it sound like in order to win, the gist that I got, best picture, is that it has to be inclusive. Um, of I don't know what that means, so I don't know what like I don't know what the definitions are of the terms that they're using. Yeah. Um, but you could probably imagine what it means. Um, and yeah, I, I kind of get it, but I think that's interesting because like, what if you make a movie like Crazy Rich Asians? Or you make a movie that's about um, the Italian Renaissance or something like that, where like it's a really good movie, but like actually would take place in a maybe non diverse place. Like, do those movies are they like what are the edge cases? Yeah, where do, where, where where does it? All Ben Affleck movies can't win no more because all he does is make movies about Boston. <laughs> But does it make sense to have like mad black people on the like, No, that's, that's, that wouldn't make sense either. Or just like yeah, that's mad what I mean. diverse in Boston. Like, no, if it's a a movie about an area of Boston where mostly Irish people live or whatever group of people live, then like, don't make it fake. Am I going to be watching like a cartel movie and it's like mad Asian people in Mexico to make it diverse? It's like, what? What do you know? I don't know. It's, I don't. I didn't read enough about it. I don't even care, honestly. I don't give a shit who wins what awards. If this means good, they can argue about this shit. Whatever the fuck. What this the article is. does, and this is always bad because it's very hard to. It's not good when you judge the past. And this is where cancel culture comes from, right? Judging the past by the rules of today, 
is not good because the article like uses the departed and return of the king and it's like well would these movies win with the new rules and it's like yeah but they weren't made with those <laughs> rules you know what i mean like they were made years ago with a different thing you no know? no like, but with it no that's the point that i'm that yeah I and that's what you're that saying is. too like but i mean like so do you make the departed with a multicultural cast so, so i'm trying to i'm trying <laughs> i was trying to it's avoid bringing this up because the fanboy in me always brings up the fact that the departed is a remake of a hong kong chinese movie you know like yeah, but that's a side of the fact <laughs> like, the story is taking place in boston don't no see but i mean again. like based on what we're talking about diversity you removed all the chinese people and put all these white people in. <laughs> well it wasn't diverse in china if what? it's a China, that's not diversity. You talking about appropriation or something? Yeah, like that, yeah, yeah. But it's just funny. That. It's just funny. Well, all right, bet in the original <laughs> Chinese Departed. Yeah, was it a multicultural movie? It depends if you count like uh, different types is of it, Chinese. There, I don't know. I don't no, know. No, 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 different people from different parts of china no i don't know because right if you talk to people from hong kong they might not say they're chinese you know (laughs) is um is it or is it a diverse movie this chinese movie the departed is it it all chinese it's probably all chinese people probably i don't i haven't seen that cast in a long time Uh, where where does the story take place abraham i believe Either China or Hong Kong, one of those two. It takes <laughs> place in, in, in China or Hong Kong, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Are those places extremely diverse for the time or whatever? Like, were, you, were you expecting to see like a Mexican character and a black character in the, the original Departed? No. It takes place in China, where there's mostly Chinese people. And it's a Chinese story being told. I don't... It, Maybe there's a story that they could tell. It's the Chinese it triad. Would be yeah, the triad. So, like, I don't remember make, what the Irish different. gangs were called, but, yeah, I don't know how much diversification so, is going on in the they Irish take gangs. The departed, they still it's still in a context. Yeah. Now, if the departed took place in the middle of New York City, yeah. then there's an argument that you can make it a diverse movie. Because yeah. now it's taking place in a place where, like, I, if you did it in Manhattan and all the people were white, I'd be like, get the fuck out of here, right? Like, I know New York City ain't like that. People would have other connect. It would you would you would so see so more what about Return of the King, the which I think is a Lord of the Rings Return movie. Of the, King. the Lord of the Lord Rings of- movie. I'm not. Yeah, they could have they they could have threw some some brothers in there. Uh, <laughs> in, what's the name mythical, of their land? What's the name of their land? Nah, it's mythical. It's made it's up. Y'all made I don't up even race. know what it's called. Y'all, yeah. y'all could have made up an ill race for the brothers, but they would have made up <laughs> the gorgs. We would have been trash or something. The, the blacks and Puerto Ricans would have been some whack low tier class. You know what I mean? You know what I'm nah, but it you know, nah, all jokes aside. But yeah, that's mythical. So I feel like in that one, yeah, where you then 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 I don't know. Then maybe you should make it if you go to say it has to be a certain stuff. Then in things where it's general, dude. That movie, up, don't that... then like yeah, you should see that kind of stuff then, right? Yeah. But if you're telling me a story in 1939 Tokyo with a bunch of Mexicans and blacks in it and a just diverse cast, like was was it actually like this in 1939 Tokyo? Was it? Would it really be like this? Would the departed really have? No, probably fucking not. Guess what? If you did a movie in Soundview, guess who's not gonna be in it? A bunch of Asian people. You know why? Ain't that the main fucking Asian people in Soundview? Just, just, just not. That's some, some people. Some people. I think. Yeah, I feel you. It wouldn't be super multicultural. It if might you were be doing one. A, a movie it in might be Soundview. One Asian It'd be a lot guy. of blacks and Hispanics. Yeah. Maybe one white dude or something like that. One Asian dude, right? Like it just wouldn't make. It just wouldn't make sense to make it. To force it to be diverse, because then it would just be like you're not in Saudi projects, you're not in Japan, you're not in, you're not in any of these things. What if it was mad black people in Mulan, mm. like blacks from Chicago in Mulan? Yeah, it'd be weird. Huh? I love how you said Chicago. Nah, I said, said no, it'd be weird. Yeah, I get it. I get it. <laughs> yeah, right. So, just saying. Everything don't got to be super sensitive. I think where it's, you know, it's obvious that maybe something is going on or 
then then sure they should call it out but to now make it that like well everything should just be diverse in general yeah hire diverse people if it makes sense for the role you know what i'm saying like hire the best actors for it if it's not necessary that the actors do look a certain way for the story maybe then yes you should get the best people whoever they may be I don't like these these awards ever. Like I hated all of them going back to like them spiting hip hop in like ninety one, you know? But that's what I'm saying too. I honestly yeah. don't give a shit who wins it for. They 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 not it. for us. But like I feel like in recent years, like didn't a Korean movie win this year, right? And The Parasite joint. Yeah, and then didn't uh Moonlight win recently too, right? With the that was a black movie. The, the black black yeah dude. Yeah, so yeah. I'm like like I don't know, like weren't things changing already? I don't I mean I don't know. I don't follow this enough. I don't watch those shows, so I don't know what the rest of the awards that weren't best picture were like, but you know. Yo, and you know what? <laughs> what about what what about look and there's been a lot of movies of diversity I feel like don't get called out. From from ages ago, Predator. Look at the cast: female, Native American, few brothers, white dudes working mm. together to fight an alien. Predator Two, black lead, <laughs> Latino partner, female <laughs> partner. Remember that the the the, the female detective, yeah. right? Aliens. Look at the unity in that Marine Corps <laughs> unit that had to fight them fight them aliens. Black Sergeant Ripley, strong female lead. Latino woman's on there, you know what I'm they saying? They're not winning awards, Look. these people though, so it don't count. They're not huh? real movies. They not they're not winning the Oscars, so they're not real movies. And you know what the problem was? Because it was racist back then, because they didn't want to acknowledge the diversity mm. in these movies. Mm. That was the problem. See now we're gonna Look, what I don't know. I don't know what people I be seeing diversity in, in the movies I watch. Kind of movies y'all watching? All of my look at the coolest movie, Bloodsport. How much more diverse you? <laughs> how much more diverse you needed to get? I make I'm I'm spitting flames right now. Come on, come on, man. The thing, Blood the thing. <laughs> That's diverse. That's diverse. The thing too, like like the other thing that I hate about these things is all these. You know, I mean this in the nice way possible because they're not really crappy movies, but all these crappy movies come out around November, too, to kind of sneak attack and win the Oscar. Like, all these, like, mm. indie, independent type films that cost no money that they they probably get off because if as long as one person goes to see it in the theater, right, they, they get a they get an Oscar nom out of it because it needs to be shown in the theater. It, it's all these movies that look like they were made to win an Oscar and not even to get people to even watch the movie, you know? Like right, right, movies right. for actors to act like I don't know the whole culture just seems like fucked up. Like it's it's when you get lost in the awards, right? Like I want to be a rapper. Why I want to be go platinum? Like wait, what? You don't even want to make cool music. You just want to go platinum? <laughs> you know? <laughs> like I right, good for you. You know? Like, right. like, so just all that weird yeah. shit. I feel like Star Wars could have been a little more diverse. They could have had a few more brothers in space. I, I felt like oh, we could have talked about that dude. He was mad pissed about Disney. Like he mm. said, like they ain't do nothing with any of the minority characters. He doesn't care mm. no more. He's just kind of like talking shit now because he doesn't care uh, mm. about like saving grace with Disney anymore. But he said both his character and um, any of the minorities. I only remember her, him and the Chinese girl in part two um, or Asian girl. I don't know what she was, but you know why? You know why? Because they didn't do anything. nothing good with them. <laughs> I hope they don't do nothing with none of the characters, not just the minority ones. I hope they kill the whole new Star Wars cast completely fucking off. You know why they're not doing nothing with him? Because nobody wants to see nobody do nothing with him or the girl or none of the white people in the movie. And I don't want to see all the other, every color. They all bad. The aliens, they all bad. The aliens in the movie. I don't know, the robots. I don't want to see none of the motherfuckers again. How about that? How about that? His character's the worst. Mm. I hate that character. <laughs> I hate that dude's character. You're talking about the black dude, right? Yeah, bro. I yeah, hate that dude yeah, is yeah. The... <laughs> Yo, when he fight that gold light, I... yo, I couldn't stand. I was like, this is the worst storytelling in the fucking world. This dude is... I hate that. The 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 the, the... she I don't even really remember her too much, other than she kind of liked that dude. But no, I would. I'm glad that whoever finally 
people are starting to make sense of the decisions, it sounds like, in some of these places, and they not going to do nothing and make a trash movie off of that character. <laughs> make a, they ain't got nothing to do with you, you know? They can make a movie of Samuel Jackson's character right now, and I'd be happy to see... Um, Mace Windu? What was his name? Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> so don't make, it, don't make it a thing about that. You got a whack Star Wars character. We don't give a shit what happened. We we I was praying that Asian girl didn't save you. <laughs> Let you fly into that fucking laser cannon they had blasted. I would I was very upset that all of that happened. Um so what what would his movie be about? Nothing. That's why minority. Y'all the original guy who characters. was supposed to do it, number nine, and uh instead of JJ part two, he he, he had like I guess his script leaked out and he had like rebellion plans for for Boyega. Like him leading like rebel stormtroopers and whatnot. But uh Yo, I wouldn't have believed it. <laughs> no none of none of his like I didn't like his character from the Force Awakens out of I just didn't I didn't like none of them characters. I just didn't like them. But him in particular, nah, he don't need his own movie. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Fuck. And the, and the girl, she got like less of a role than he did. Yeah, it's just been a movie. It is. She I'm got done. forgotten I'm after done. movie two, Last Jedi. She gets forgotten about. Like, I'm done. I'm not even going on. But that's good news. <laughs> not for like the racial reasons that he may be saying, but I'm yeah. glad they're not going to make another trash ass movie. His trash ass character. Yeah, no, he seemed done. A lot of them seemed done. Like, uh, like all of that shit's done. All of that. <laughs> <shit's> done. <laughs> That, that shit is a travesty. Talking about this shit got to do with race. Did you watch the movies you were in? You see what they did? Nobody <laughs> want none of this shit no more. None of y'all. Yo, so we going to wrap it. We going to wrap it. What up? Let's wrap it up. I got a little upset there. <laughs> you got some songs of the week. It be false claims, man. False claims. You got some songs of the week. Um, Man, songs of the week. Let me let me let me look real quick. You want me? You want me to see. drop some? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. What, what do you? Right, what so you these are some wave artists. I don't know how you say this guy's name, but Haru Kasuka. Um, sounds Japanese, probably isn't, but uh, diluted, diluted's pretty hard, man. Like I don't know. I was going. I was hearing some of his older stuff because they uh, Wave Pool Three came out uh, yesterday. And I forgot about this dude. He, he, I don't see him no more. But the, his his music was coming out during the classic sound of the wave. So it has that it has that mix back in the day. If you hear the older ones, you know, like it sounds kind of shitty, but it isn't. You know, like it's good enough to not be shitty. But you could tell, like he he actually did the work instead of like being mm. professional. You know, like yeah, stuff like that. Um, Climax dropped something new. It's like Climax, mm. but spelled K L I M E K S. He dropped some new shit. That's probably one of my favorite wave artists. He dropped Mystic Knight. So that's that's pretty dope too. Let me see. Okay. And then <clears throat> even though it's not new, because it came out as a single, I'll do Conway the Machine, Fear of a God, with Dage Loaf. Mm, mm. I don't know too much about her. But she sound like a living sample on that song. Like she really do. Mm. <laughs> like, like she, I was like, this yeah, is like, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. an incredible power right there. <laughs> I was like, like, like nice. but I, um, <laughs> I only got two, so I'll keep mine short. Um, I don't think I mentioned this last time, but I told you I mentioned Mozzie. So a song unethical and deceitful, by Mozzie. It's on his latest album, um, or the last one that came out, Beyond Bulletproof. Mm. And then the Conway track, but it's not all for the album. Mm. It was actually Honcho by, I think, MC8 featuring Conway. Mm. Um, so, yeah, MC8 featuring Conway is called Honcho. I thought that was a pretty cool track. I think Premier produced it. Let me double check real quick. Mm. Um, but I, I think that one is produced by Premier. It is. Mm. It is produced by Premier. So. Those two are pretty, pretty two cool tracks. I like. There you go. And there you have it, folks. You know what I'm saying? If you, we, we need to have like an outro kind of. Thing. I don't like, something. If you ain't thinking, you're sinking. <laughs> I you know don't something. You know, you don't. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I mean, I feel that too. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean, word. Let's just leave it at that. Then. I don't something. You know I mean? And stop with the weak bad guys and and and. 
and shenanigans shit that's going on out there. There you go. Get your shit together, movie writers. 